Alexander was dumbfounded. He insinuated and thought she would at least have some idea but obviously not and she even declared that she would work hard without finding out the details. This little lamb, she already forgot the very first piece of advice he gave her. Silly, silly girl. He just hoped she wouldn't back out of their deal, especially when he thought about all the things he wanted to do with her. Little lamb, watch what you say. I. I'm serious. I can do that. If you give me time intervals to rest my hand, I'm sure I can do it. Alexander's laughter roared. You are overestimating yourself. Your hands almost couldn't even move the second time you tried to. You will never know unless you try Alex. She gulped, looking serious. Abby was about to speak again when his finger landed on her luscious lips. Enough. He stopped her. Alexander didn't want her to say anything more about this. Fine. Don't you regret this later, Abigail. Upon hearing his approval, Abby's eyes shone and she hugged him with a smile. Thank you, she even exclaimed, causing Alex to bite his lips. The girl then pulled away from him and carefully moved three steps away before she carefully spread the white blanket on the roof while Alexander just stood there with his hands in his pockets, watching her with his head a little bit tilted. Once she was done, Abigail carefully sat on it and looked up at Alex. Come here, she said as she patted the spot right next to her. Alex wordlessly moved and sat next to her. Abby smiled brightly. Her smile was more beautiful than the amazing sunset over the horizon. So, what are we gonna do next? Play mobile games, he lazily asked as he leaned back, using his palm to support his body, stretching out one of his legs and bent the other one. Nope, Abby said. Her smile still didn't fade. He wondered why she was smiling. Why was she looking so happy and excited? Was there something exciting this little lamb planned to do? Please lay down, she requested and Alex narrowed his eyes but he still did as she asked. He raised one arm over his head and made it his pillow. Abby watched his every move and stared at him once he settled in his position, still smiling. Alexander was puzzled. He was somewhat anticipating what this girl would do next. He thought she might be thinking about doing something exciting since she looked really fired up. For some reason, his anticipation increased at the thought. He licked his lips as he looked at her, waiting for some exciting action. When Abby moved, Alex stared intently into her eyes. Soon after, she bent closer to him and that single move made Alex smile within him. It looked like this little lamb was indeed doing her best, and she was actually a little bolder than he thought. At that moment, Alexander waited for her kiss to land on his lips. His gaze became intense. He was filled with anticipation. As she inched closer, he finally realized that he hadn't actually kissed her yet. He wondered how those delicious-looking, innocent lips would taste. However, to his shocked surprise, the kiss didn't come. The girl actually didn't bend over because she wanted to kiss him, she bent over because she wanted to lie down next to him. She settled her head on his chest, over the arm that was spread out, while Alex fell utterly speechless yet again. He couldn't believe this at all. Alexander wanted to laugh at his mistaken assumptions. To him, what happened was something unbelievable. Why the hell was he even expecting that from this little lamb of his? He should have known, more than anyone else, what this little lamb was capable of doing, or isn't. While Alexander was busy with his very own internal dilemma, Abigail let out a long sigh of relief. So this is how it feels, she suddenly mumbled, pulling Alex's thoughts back to reality. It feels really nice lying up here, right? 
She smiled as she glanced up at him before her gaze looked up at the fading colors in the sky. Alexander didn't say a word. It was because he saw her eyes twinkling like there were a million stars sparkling inside them. I always wanted to experience this, to know what it would feel like, she confessed, looking up at the sky as she reached her hand up to it as if she could touch it. Alex was forced to look at the sky as well. When was the last time he ever gazed up the sky like this? It's beautiful. It feels so nice, she muttered again. When she realized that Alex hadn't said another word since he lay down on the blanket, she looked up to him. Right? she asked him. Alex finally glanced at her and for some reason, she saw something in his eyes. It wasn't coldness, nor darkness, nor the usual dangerous as hell look, it was different. She didn't know what it was but for some reason, seeing that look in his eyes at that moment made her want to extend her hand and touch his face and embrace him. It was a very strange feeling. But then, before Abby could move, that look in his eyes abruptly disappeared. It returned to normal in a blink of an eye and the jellyfish abruptly changed the color it was emitting again. Ten minutes are almost up, Abigail. Shouldn't you do what you were planning to do here now, he said, arching his brow slightly. But Abby just blinked at him innocently. No, I don't have anything more to do. Alex creased his brows. Don't tell me you climbed up here just to... Mm. All I wanted was to experience gazing up at the night sky while lying on the roof with my boyfriend. Alexander gaped at her. Was she serious? She climbed all the way up to the roof, putting herself in danger, just for this. He closed his eyes as if trying to understand how her brain worked but he failed. It was as if his brain was throwing out error messages at him when he tried. But then again, he thought that doing this kind of thing was exactly just so little lambish. He let out a quiet sigh and decided to just stay put with this peculiar little thing beside him. Do you think we will see a shooting star? She asked again after a long while of silence. The sky was already dark and stars were starting to appear, one after another. Alex didn't answer. Hey, are you already sleepy? She pulled her body up to look at his face. To her surprise, the man's eyes were wide open and he didn't look sleepy at all. Little lamb, don't you think it would be better if we do something exciting up here rather than just lying here like this and waiting for shooting stars to come? There was a playful smirk on his face causing Abby to blink again. Abby looked at him as if he had grown a second head. Do something exciting. What is more exciting than watching the sky from up here? she asked. She thought that this was already pretty damn exciting. She couldn't think of anything better than this. Climbing up the roof, lying in your boyfriend's arms and watching the lovely colorful shades of the sky as they slowly fade to gray, this was a dream come true for her, the epitome of the roof experience. But then she thought about it and figured that this was probably not as exciting an experience for someone like him who had probably seen plenty of the world, as it was for her. Alexander's smirk became even more distinct and he had a devilish look in his eyes. He suddenly pulled his body up and twisted around so that in the next moment, he was lying half on top of her. His eyes were shining with mischief as he gazed down at her. There's definitely something much more exciting, Abigail, he sexily uttered as his glorious face hovered over her face. His thumbs suddenly landed on her lips and he gently caressed them without averting his gaze from her. The intensity in his eyes made Abby's throat run dry. Doing naughty things up here, out in the open can be very, very exciting, he whispered and Abby's face became red. And naughty things. He nodded. The naughty things adults do usually in bed at night, Abigail, he clarified mischievously causing Abby's lips to part in shock. She was speechless. Was he thinking about those things all this time and was that why he was not responding at all? 
She couldn't believe him. How could he still think about those things when the view up here was this spectacular? He didn't know how to appreciate the beauty of nature at all. Like for example, before Alex could finish his sentence, Obi's palm flew over his mouth, stopping him from saying anything else. Alex, T that's not nice. We can't do something like that here, she scolded and Alex's face beamed in amusement. A little lamb was actually scolding him. He grabbed her wrist and peeled it away from his mouth. Why not? Are you shy? Don't worry, Abigail, we are in the best place right now and no one will see us from here, he assured her but Abby became even redder. What are you saying, the moon and stars are up there, watching us right now. An it's too dangerous to be doing n naughty things up here, she covered her face with her palms as if she wanted to shrink and disappear. Before any reaction could register on the man's face, Abby peeked through her fingers to look at him when suddenly, ah, she yelled excitedly as her eyes turned into huge circles. Her arms suddenly wrapped around his neck as she pulled him down to move his head out of the way just to have a better view of what she just saw. I'm going to make a wish, Alex, she exclaimed and before Alex knew it, the girl let go of him and slipped away from under him and stood up. She closed her eyes and cupped her hands together as the wind blew, gently lifting her hair so that it looked like they were floating behind her. When she opened her eyes again, she looked at Alexander with a smile. The man was already lying back on his spot, looking back at her with a look of wonder and bewilderment as he gazed up at her. Abigail was so happy. Alex, you make a wish too. She urged excitedly, but the man just closed his eyes as if to avoid seeing her face. I don't wish, Abigail, he mumbled but Abby's expression didn't change. Okay, I'll make another for you then, Alex, she said and the man abruptly opened his eyes. When he looked at her again, she was already facing the horizon, with her hands cupped together and her eyes closed while her long silky hair was dancing gracefully with the wind. Alexander fell silent watching her. When she was done, she looked down at him and smiled before she spread her arms out and looked up at the sky. Alex just continued watching her. He seemed curious about what she wished for him but he didn't ask. An indifferent look just flashed in his eyes as he watched her. But suddenly, an unexpected strong gust of wind blew by. Abby was caught off guard and her body wobbled from the force. She tried to regain her balance but it was useless. The wind had pushed her body backward so unexpectedly that all she could do was flail her arms round trying not to fall down. Alex saw what had happened and he instantly moved, as fast as lightning wrapping his arm around her waist and pulling her close to him into the safety of his embrace. The girl who was actually brave enough to bargain with the devil was about to be defeated by the wind so easily. I can't believe you, Abigail. I... I'm not that weak. I just wasn't expecting it to blow so strong at that moment, she told him. Her heartbeat was drumming in her ears and her breathing became a bit shallow. For a second there she had thought she might have been done for. Luckily for her, her boyfriend had quick reflexes. Yeah, yeah. We're going, he said succinctly. Can we stay for another hour? Even though she had a scary experience just now, she didn't want this experience to end yet. She wanted to imprint this magical feeling of being on top of the world with Alex by her side. Do you want me to let go and drop you from here, huh, Abigail?" he playfully asked and Abby's arms suddenly wrapped around his neck as tightly as she could, as if she was clinging on for dear life. Alex had his answer and her reaction made him laugh. Good girl, that's what I thought, he said before he carried her towards the ladder. Alex placed her down by the end of the ladder. He turned to her and said, I'll go down first. Make sure you hold on to the ladder so the wind doesn't blow you away again, 
He almost sounded worried about her but he was wearing a mischievous smile again as he said those words. He quickly made his way down and the moment his feet landed on solid ground, he looked up and motioned for her to follow. Abby swallowed. It was easy when she climbed up but looking down now, she felt a little scared. Thankfully, seeing Alex down there calmed her heart. She then placed her feet on the first rung and Alex immediately noticed her feet were slightly shaking. He twitched as he became alert. This girl was simply unbelievable. How could she talk so tough and all that when she was trembling over something like this? As Abby carefully climbed down, Alex didn't realize it but he had been holding his breath the entire time he watched her and only let it out when she was finally at arm's reach. Abby jumped down to the veranda and clapped her hands together and beamed in satisfaction. One more thing to tick off the list, she celebrated inwardly. They headed back to the dining hall where dinner was already laid out on the table. She was surprised to see Mr. Black Leather Jacket sitting there, casually chatting with Alex's latest visitor. Alex. What took you so long? Were you exercising or something? Xavier said as he saw the two enter the room. He accompanied his statement with a couple of winks, clearly indicating what kind of exercise he was referring to. Kai nudged Xavier like a big brother does when their younger brother was being naughty and he went up to Abby and finally introduced himself. Hello, Abigail. My name is Skylar, but you can call me Kai for short. He paused and looked at the guy next to him and introduced him also. This guy here is Xavier. You can call him Z or you can just ignore him, that's fine too, he said with a quick smile and a twinkle in his eye. Hi Kai. I finally found out what your real name is. I've been calling you Mr. Black Leather Jacket this whole time, she confessed with a shy smile. The moment she smiled at Kai, she felt a chill coming from behind her. She immediately turned to Alex and made puppy dog eyes at him and tried to distract him. Alex, I'm hungry. Can we eat? Her stomach grumbled right on cue and the frozen iceberg melted a little. Without a word, Alex strode towards the table and sat down and waited for everyone else to take their seat. Abby was relieved that Alex didn't ask her to sit on his lap again. Was it because Ezekiel Cheen was not around? She noticed that the table was only set for four people, one for Alex at the head of the table, one to his right and two to his left. Maybe Ezekiel Cheen wasn't back yet. Xavier walked towards the seat on the right so Abby and Kai took the seats to the left but before they could seat themselves, Alex looked at Xavier with cold daggers in his eyes. Xavier knew that look but his expression clearly said he had no idea what he did to earn that look. The words, what did I do wrong, flashed in his eyes. Xavier racked his brain but could not solve the puzzle at all. Luckily a savior arrived. Charles the butler walked toward Xavier and whispered in his ear. Mr. Xavier, I believe that seat is reserved for Miss Abigail. His eyes became as round as a full moon as realization finally dawned on him. He immediately flew to the other side of the table and stood next to Abigail. I'm sorry, Abigail. I didn't mean to take your seat. Abigail, who had no idea what was happening, just stared at him. Ha! Huh? My seat. I don't have my own seat. What was he talking about? She looked at Charles, then Alex, and at Xavier as he motioned for her to take the seat on Alex's right-hand side. She was so confused but she did as he asked because, one, she didn't want to upset anyone and two, she wanted to tame her grumbling stomach. As she took her seat, the other two did also. Dinner was comfortable and lively as the two men across her bantered back and forth, with Kai getting the better of Xavier most of the time. Alex sat quietly like he was away on a different different planet, 
while Abi ate her fill while observing Alex's visitors. Abi tried to drag her meal out for as long as she could because she knew what was coming. She was going to be sent back to her room while all the men talked about their secret squirrel man business, that she now referred to as. As expected, after she finished her meal, the order came. Go upstairs and wait for me in your room, he said and she just sighed in resignation. Before Alex or Abby could say anything else, Xavier butted in in surprise. She has her own room. You're not sleeping in the same bed, he was surprised. Why? Alex wanted to glare at Xavier and tell him it was none of his business but Abby also looked at him, as if she, too, was curious about the reason. She too was quite surprised and wondered why she got given a separate room when she first arrived at the house. She fully thought that when he said that he needed his girlfriend to live with him, that he would expect her to sleep in the same room as him. So yes, she was definitely curious as to why he didn't. Because this little fruit is still unripe. He explained as he put his big hand on her head and rubbed it. I don't eat unripe fruits, he added as he smiled at Abby. Abby didn't know how to feel after hearing his explanation. A an unripe fruit. Hey. Who are yo? Shu, go upstairs now. He cut her off and the jellyfish turned from emitting a warm glow into emitting a cold, chilly gloom. Abby knew that she shouldn't push it anymore but at that point, she didn't care. She was too agitated at being compared to a fruit, and an unripe one at that. Abby puffed her cheeks and left but not before she glared at him, letting him know that she was not happy to be compared to an unripe inanimate object. Luckily for her, she was already halfway up the stairs, yes, she took the stairs so that she could stomp on his imaginary face every step of the way, when Xavier spoke again. Oh, so you're waiting until she's ripe and sweet, eh? Xavier snickered and a cold blast of wind hit his face, so cold that he actually shivered. He then threw his hands up in surrender, mimicking the action of zipping his mouth and throwing away the key. Back in Abby's room, she stomped her way to the bathroom and filled up the bath with very warm water. She needed to relax and there was nothing like a bubble bath to release the tension from her body. She put some bubble solution in the tub and it filled up with light fluffy bubbles in no time. Once it was filled, she slipped inside the tub and she felt better instantly. She let her mind drift and it played back the scene of them up on the roof like a movie. She closed her eyes and she smiled. It really was a magical moment for more than one reason. The second being that she actually got him to agree to her request. She felt that it was an almost impossible task but she was glad she persevered. She knew that there was a price to pay, but was there anything in the world that came without a price? As she thought about the starry night sky, the shooting star and her wishes, her mood changed for the better. She deliberately didn't think about him describing her as an unripe fruit because she knew it would just work her up. She thought about him and the two items on her list that she has now completed. Two memories that she never wanted to forget. As she thought about it, 31 items and 31 days would make 31 wonderful memories to take with her to the next world. She was sure that once this month was over, and her heart and mind were filled with all the wonderful memories, she wouldn't want for anything more. After the water began to cool down, she dried herself up, put on a bathrobe and headed out to the bedside table. She opened the drawer that stored her little book and opened it up. She uncapped her pen and drew another big tick next to the note that said, Gaze up at the night sky from a rooftop with my boyfriend. She then drew out another notebook, more like a diary, and started to write down the details of her experiences from the night before and that night. She wanted to record every little detail so that when her memories started to fade, she could read what she had written in this book and relive those experiences like it happened just yesterday. Once she finished with that, 
She got dressed into her pajamas and laid in bed as she waited patiently for Alex to arrive. After watching the second hand go around five times, she decided that doing nothing wasn't a good plan, so she went and found a book to keep her mind occupied. She picked a classic, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This book was one of her favorites. She brought it back to the bed to read and became immersed in it soon after. The hour hand on the clock went around three more times before Alex finally went upstairs. He wondered what kind of mood he would find her in as he pictured her face when she left the dining room earlier. Would she still be angry at him or would she have mellowed down by now? He stopped at the top of the stairs for a second, before he headed straight towards her door. He opened the door and walked in without even bothering to knock. He entered as if her room was his. The moment his eyes found her, the corner of his mouth tilted up a little. She was lying on the bed with the blanket sprawled messily around her and there was an open book lying on her chest. She looked like she had fallen asleep reading a book waiting for him. He walked over to her and stood there gazing down at her peaceful sleeping face. Her face looked harmless, as always. She looked so damn vulnerable that Alex bit his lip as he watched her. The next moment, he sat on the bedside, picked up the open book from her chest and placed it on top of the bedside table before he returned his gaze to her face. His eyes then fell on her hair which was scattered on her white pillow and reached out his hand and picked strands of it. He just fiddled with her hair, as he looked to be thinking about something complicated. After he got tired of playing with her smooth hair and listening to her even breathing, Alex's eyes shifted to her long eyelashes and he reached out again to touch it. Even though you're still just an unripe little fruit. He suddenly mumbled as his finger crawled down to her cheekbone and then to her soft and alluring, pink lips. He stayed there for a little while longer before he finally strode towards the door. He turned the lights off before closing the door behind him. The sky was still a little dark when Abby woke up. She blinked and stared at the ceiling. She remembered that she had been reading a book while waiting for Alex. Wait, she fell asleep. Shocked, Abby suddenly rose. Wow. I fell asleep. She looked around but he didn't seem to be in the room. Was he still downstairs, she wondered. Or had he come and left because she was asleep? What time was it now? Abby crawled out of her bed and grabbed her phone. Upon looking at the time, her big eyes became even bigger. Oh no. It was already morning. After facepalming herself, Abigail buried her face on the pillow. She was done for. Would Alex punish her for this? But, but this was his fault. He was the one who took too long and he should have woken her up when he had the chance. But then, she was to blame too for not keeping herself awake. Abigail was pretty worried that Alex would punish her for last night so she thought that she might go out and take a walk to clear her mind and prepare herself for the day. She quickly changed out of her pajamas and headed for the door. It was still quite early and she thought that Alex was probably still asleep so even though he probably couldn't hear anything, she still tiptoed out the door and very carefully closed it behind her. However, to her surprise, the moment she turned towards the stairs, she saw some movement to her left and her eyes landed on Alex. He looked as if he was just about to enter his room. Abby was confused. She looked at his clothes and his hair and they told her that he didn't seem to have just woken up. Was he just about to go inside? Where did he come from? No, don't overthink Abigail. He might have just left his room and forgot something, she reasoned to herself before she walked towards him with a bright smile. Good morning, Alex, she greeted. Why are you up so early, he replied wearing a little indifferent expression. Um that, last night. I fell asleep. Why didn't you wake me up? B. 
because I could see that your energy was already depleted. How could I wake up a hibernating little fruit? I don't have any use for a limped and exhausted little lamb, he smirked. Ah, this man was at it again. She couldn't believe that he was greeting her so early in the morning with those words. As Albi approached him, Alex pulled close the door he just opened. It was as if he didn't want her to peek inside it, causing Abby's brows to crease for a second. He faced her and held her chin. Now that I think about it, you're too frail, Abigail. You should exercise more to build up your immunity and stamina, he suggested and Abby's gaze looked everywhere but at him. He exercise. Abby was a little worried. She didn't really like exercising. The only exercise she did was walking. Okay, it's still early so we can go for a short exercise, he said. He then looked at what she was wearing and he instructed her. Go get changed into more appropriate sportswear, he suddenly said, even holding her shoulders and turning her around to face the other way, towards her room. Move quickly little fruit or, do you want me to be the one to peel your... No. I can do it on my own, she immediately protested and thus, just like that, Abby dashed towards her room and slammed her door a little harder than normal, causing the man to just smile in amusement. However, after he stared at her door for a while, his smile slowly faded as he faced his room and opened it. As the sky slowly changed from shades of black to brighter shades of blue, Two people could be seen outside the huge house heading towards the empty street. Alexander was walking right beside Abby and if anyone saw them, those people would think they were one of those couples who exercised together. But if one were to observe them close enough, the two actually didn't seem like a couple taking a sweet walk together, it almost looked like Alex was out walking his lazy pet. Walk faster, Abigail. Jog, he ordered as he nonchalantly walked with his long legs. His hands were in his pockets and he didn't even need to jog to keep up with her. Actually, it was she who needed to jog to keep up with him. He was just walking casually, cool as a prickly cucumber, as always. Little fruit, it hasn't even been five minutes yet. He halted and looked at the already panting little lamb trailing behind him. I don't like exercising, Alex, she complained. You have to like it, Abigail. How can you tame my little brother four times daily when you're this weak, he asked as he leaned in on her. This is one of my ways of raising a good girlfriend. You will forever be an unripe little fruit if you don't exercise. This is one of the ways to make you ripen up a little quicker. Please stop referring to me as a fruit. I'm not a fruit or a lamb, she argued but Alexander just chuckled at the look on her face. Sure. I'll stop calling you those names once you graduate from being an unripe fruit and a naive little lamb, he countered and Abby could only bite her lips and started jogging again. After another five minutes, the little lamb suddenly clung on to Alex. Alex, let's rest please. She begged in between breaths. Her lungs felt like they were burning but all Alex could see was the glistening sweat falling from her face down to her neck. What a little weakling. One more minute, little fruit. You're like a strict coach, she cried but she still let go of him and continued running as he said. She looked ahead and when she saw a bench, she excitedly ran towards it and sat there before the minute was up. Alexander could only sigh as he saw her sprint towards the bench and sit down. He gave her the water bottle he was holding. Why do you look like you just participated in a marathon? Now I'm starting to doubt your stamina, Abigail. There's no way a weak little fruit like you could do it twice, let alone four times a day. I think our deal is. Before Alex could even finish what he was going to say, Abby cut him off. You already promised. Our deal is already settled, she immediately retorted, panting. You can't take back your words anymore, Alex. 
Alex slammed his palms on the bench behind her, wearing his killer smirk as his face hovered over hers. Then, his eyes seemed to caress her wet lips, which was moist from the water he just gave her. I really think that these lips of yours need to be disciplined. Because if not, I am worried that these lips of yours will be the end of you, he warned, both seriousness and mischief playing in his eyes. His intense gaze swept through her lips as his face moved closer and Obi's heart began to thump even wilder. W was he going to kiss her? Obi's heart, which was already working overtime from the jogging episode, beat even faster. She didn't know how it was possible for it to do so but it did. She suddenly fell into a slight panic, and before she knew it, her hand flew over his lips again, covering his mouth just before his lips could reach hers. Alexander's eyes narrowed with displeasure. The man seemed annoyed as he moved his hands to hold her wrist. As he peeled off her palm from his face, the flustered Obi spoke. Um... Alex, see can we do this in a more special way, she asked, her red, sweaty face had become even more red. Little lamb, what the hell are you trying to say? Um, well, it's just that I... I want my F first kiss to be memorable. First kiss. Nobody's ever kissed you before. Alexander gaped at her. Ever. She nodded and Alexander sexily bit his lips. This unripe little fruit, how come she was still? Alexander couldn't help but wonder where this girl hid herself all these years to be this, this. He couldn't even find the right words to describe her anymore. Innocent was too weak a word to use. While Alex was filled with bewilderment as he looked at her, Abby abruptly stood up. If Alex didn't react fast enough, her little head would have hit his chin. This fruit. Ah, she suddenly looked like she remembered something important. I'm going to tell you my request for today. She beamed with excitement, even holding the man's arms as she looked up at him. My third request is. Kiss me under the rain, Alex. I want my first kiss to be in a romantic setting like that. Her eyes twinkled again while the man was yet again, rendered speechless. Abigail, are you serious? Under the rain. He suddenly looked up and saw an ocean of blue above them with not a single cloud in the sky. It definitely didn't look like it was going to rain that day. This girl was asking for the impossible. Why wait for rain? Suddenly, Alex cut off his own sentence. It appeared that he realized that arguing with this little fruit would only make him fall into another damn hole of speechlessness so he decided not to question her silly request anymore. He thought that this was the best choice in dealing with this creature or else he might even become mute from just three days with her. After some time, a knowing smile then curved on his lips as he grabbed her chin with his thumb. You finally uttered an exciting request, little lamb. A romantic setting for your first kiss, ha. Huh? Sure thing, Abigail, he agreed. You still owe me four taming sessions from yesterday plus four today, so I think I'd better fulfill your request now so that it won't get in the way tonight, his eyes glimmered with excitement and amusement. Abby silently swallowed her own saliva. That's right, she didn't fulfill her taming task yesterday. That meant she'd have to do it eight times today. Is that even possible? Could that little big monster really be that energetic? Wouldn't she wear it out by then? The little naive Abby was actually worrying about the little big monster. Her face burned red and she started to feel a little worried, worried for the little big monster. Surely it would get tired and want to sleep after two or three times, right? She could only wish. Wait, did he say he was going to fulfill her request right now? But it was still early. What about the rain? Come, little lamb. Let's go back. I heard from Charles that you have work, he said and Abby stood up and walked beside him. 
Yes, I have work. I'm working as an assistant teacher at the orphanage, she told him as she smiled. You look like you enjoy your job. Yep. It's amazing. I'd like to invite you to see the kids when you're free, she happily said and Alex paused for a moment. He didn't look at her or give her an answer. How about you? What do you do, Alex? She asked curiously, craning her head ahead to look at his face. Alex glanced at her as they continued walking forward. I'm currently unemployed Abigail, he replied and Abby puffed her cheeks. Please be serious. Hmm, aw, I think I have a part-time job right now. I'm babysitting a little lamb. No, that's not quite right. I'm raising a girlfriend. I'm also looking for a way to quickly ripen an unripe little fruit. Yeah, those are my part-time jobs right now. He spouted with a straight face, causing Abby to finally snap and stand before him to block his path. She was pouting at him, silently telling him to be serious because she wasn't going to move if he didn't take her seriously. Alexander smirked at her before his large palm suddenly landed on her head. The next moment, his eyes became serious. It's better if you don't know, Abigail, he told her. It's for your own sake. Abby saw that strange look in his eyes again for a fleeting moment before it disappeared. She didn't know why, but she felt something tug at her heart. She knew that this man wouldn't easily reveal anything. She even already thought that she might never find out anything about who he really was during her stay here with him. Okay, it's time for you to go and get yourself ready for work, Abigail he said and Abby finally realized that they were now in front of his house. She shook her head and switched gears. She thought that she mustn't let this affect her this much and encouraged herself by telling herself she'd only been there three days. She still had time so she must not let this disappoint her. As they both walked towards the entrance, Abby was curious and puzzled. She thought that he's going to fulfill her request. But well, there was no way it was going to rain this morning, that was certain. Are you going to shower this morning? He suddenly asked and Abby blinked. Ha! Huh. Why was he asking that? She looked at him in question but the man just smiled meaningfully at her as he halted, waiting for her response. Of course, I am, Abby finally answered and the man moved again. Good. Come on, then. He said and all of a sudden, he carried her like a princess. Abby's eyes widened. What are you? I'm going to fulfill your request like you asked, Abigail. He smiled meaningfully and Abby gaped at him. How? Was he the god of rain or something? Before she knew it, they were inside the house. He put the confused little lamb down in the middle of the large living room. She looked up at him with a million questions in her eyes. Then, before she could open her mouth to ask. Close your eyes, Abigail, he ordered. Ha! Huh? Why? Just close your eyes and don't open it until you hear my signal. Abby could only comply. Seconds ticked by and her mind was running around like a headless chicken, trying to figure out what he was up to. The next moment, Abby heard the fire alarm siren roar loudly inside the mansion. Her eyes opened wide but before she could move, water began to sprinkle from above. You wanted rain, right? He smirked and Abby's mouth dropped. What on earth just happened? What did he just do? Well, he did what she thought was impossible. He made it rain, inside the house. She felt like she was suddenly transported to a wonderful and magical fantasy land. The light from the large chandelier hanging from the fourth floor was still lit, emitting a bewitching twinkle of lights over the droplets of water flowing down, creating small, colorful rainbows around them. It was magical, as if a rainbow fairy had arrived to sprinkle them with some of her magic. 
This picturesque setting was better than her wildest dreams. She had imagined how she wanted her first kiss to be like and they were all so terribly romantic and cliché, with her and the man chasing each other outside with rain falling softly all around them. The man would then catch her, look her deeply in the eyes before the man would swoop in for her very first kiss. She subconsciously lifted her hand and opened her palm as the droplets fell all around them, with her eyes wide with awe and her mouth still agape from the shock. But then she closed her eyes and lifted her face up to the roof with arms wide open, embracing the feeling of the water pouring over them. She twirled around in a circle, her hair spraying droplets of water like a whirlpool around her. When she stopped, she raised her face to look at Alex and felt like her heart was about to explode. She could see him moving closer to her. His hair was wet, his clothes drenched and what was even more amazing was that she did not see his usual devilish smirk. His eyes were serious, still cold but devastatingly more beautiful than ever. He was like a dark angel who just emerged from the ground under the rain. This was too much. Everything was too much for Abby, she couldn't even hear anything but her pounding heart. This definitely felt like a dream. It was like everything else faded to the background and she could only focus on him. Once he stood right before her, the corner of the man's lips began to slowly lift up. I'm not patient enough to wait for the rain to come, so here we are. I personally think that this is romantic enough. What do you think, he asked but the dazed Obby took a long while to respond. It's... She didn't even know what the right word was to describe this scene. It was spectacular, surprising, one of a kind, magical, amazing, all the things she wanted this experience to be. Alex smiled. He could see that she was dumbstruck. Good. I finally made her speechless for once. I would hate for her to think that she had a boring, cliché boyfriend, he thought. He was glad that he seemed to have exceeded her expectations. He reached out and cupped her face with his hand as he gently wiped away the water from her cheek with his thumb. He looked at her in the eyes and he saw that they were filled with a mixture of emotions. He saw anticipation, excitement, longing, wonder and something else that he couldn't quite describe. He slowly moved his face closer to hers and gently tucked her hair behind her ear at the same time. As she saw him getting closer, Obby's heart started pounding so hard she was afraid it would leap out of her chest. She held her breath and subconsciously closed her eyes as all her focus shifted to her lips. This was it, her first ever kiss. A second passed by and then she felt it, the pressure of his soft lips on hers and the world suddenly ceased to exist. It was just her and him at that moment in time, nothing else and no one else. His kiss was soft and undemanding and it blew her mind, but the moment he kissed the droplets from her lips, her knees grew weak from the pleasure and she felt as if her heart was going to explode. She never imagined that just kissing someone could be this intense. She felt overwhelmed from all these new emotions she was feeling. The two of them stood there, unaware and uncaring of anyone and anything else around them. Water ran down from their forehead to their faces to where their lips met, a cool contrast to the heat of their embrace, and they didn't move for a long time. That was until Alex pushed his lips onto hers with a bit more pressure and the wave that went through Abby intoxicated her. Her head swam in a daze and she felt like she was going to faint. It was that intense and she didn't know how she was still conscious. Alex took a peek of her face and he was mesmerized. He didn't kiss her the way he usually kissed other women. For a long, long time since he could remember, he would usually kiss rough and hard because he didn't kiss out of love but lust. That was his way. So right then, he really didn't know why he kissed this little fruit so tenderly. But then, he concluded that the taste of her innocent lips must have made him subconsciously hold back. After all, this little fruit was still unripe. 
He could only caress her gently for now and be patient. Once their lips parted, Alex was surprised at the look on her face. She was so red and breathless. Her dazed expression, as she slowly opened her eyes and looked up at him, made him freeze for a moment. He admitted that she tasted better than he imagined, despite her being just an unripe little fruit, despite her just standing there like a soft mannequin and despite the fact that she didn't even move a single muscle to respond to his kiss apart from just having her lips apart in a subconscious manner. Her innocent lips were still the sweetest ones he had ever tasted. Alexander was once again amazed at how strange this little lamb made him feel. He thought that she was such a rare type of fruit, might even be the only fruit of its kind, something he never knew existed or tasted before. His thumb moved to the soft and tender lips he just kissed and he rubbed them gently. He suddenly had the urge to suck them but he didn't want to give her another shock at this moment, not when she was already this dumbstruck just from that slow and shallow kiss. Be glad, little fruit. I'm a little satisfied with how sweet you smell and how unique you taste so I'm being very, very considerate right now. But then, as he continued to gaze at her wet face and her dazed but mesmerizingly beautiful eyes, Alexander wondered if this little lamb was satisfied. She still had not said anything but he was curious about whether he was able to satisfy her expectations. Did this measure up to her imagination? Was this how she wanted her first kiss to go? Did it meet her expectations? Alexander began to move his face closer to her face again but the water suddenly stopped falling. Oh, it looks like the rain stopped, he said as he looked up and Abigail finally returned to reality. As Alex let go of her, Abby touched her own lips as her face started to fill with wonder and disbelief as she continued gazing up at him. Alexander was amused with her expression and the corners of his lips curved up. However, before he could say a word, the sound of something smashing to the ground attracted his attention. He looked at the source of the sound and saw that one of the maids had dropped an expensive antique face. However, Alexander didn't even crease his brows or get upset at the incident. It was because his eyes didn't just see that his butler and maids were all drenched, his eyes also finally caught sight of the two guests who were standing by the door with their hair and clothes also dripping with water as if they had jumped into a lake with clothes on. The men who were still in their pajamas all just stood there, looking at the couple in utter disbelief. However, one of them had remained as cool as ever. Ezekiel Chin was the only one who was not drenched. He was standing by the fireplace, coolly holding a black umbrella, as he watched the scene with a blank expression. All Alexander did upon realizing the situation was clear his throat. He nonchalantly looked at the little lamb before him and began to order her. Little lamb, your request has been granted. Now go upstairs and take a proper bath, he told her and Abby finally moved her head around. Once she spotted drenched people looking at the two of them in utter shock, Abby felt like her face began to blaze and before she knew it. Okay, she replied as she dashed towards the grand staircase. Alexander watched the little lamb ascending the stairs without turning back and a playful smile curved on his lips. The dumbstruck people finally moved. The butler signaled the maids to move and start the cleanup. Oh God, they felt like a super typhoon just flooded the entire house. This will take some time to clean up. Everything was drenched with water just like that, master, you're too much. T to the power of T you should have at least warned us. Alex, you. What the hell, man. Some warning would have been appreciated. Xavier was the first to burst out. I can't believe you of all people would actually do something as crazy as this. I understand you are doing this for your princess but you should have at least warned us of this impending typhoon. Look at us, he complained and Alex just raised a brow at him. Crazy? I don't think so. It would be crazier to wait for the rain. 
Besides, you guys should be thankful, you got a shower without doing anything. And don't blame me, you two were just slowpokes. Look at Zeke, he smirked at them and when the two looked at Zeke, Xavier burst out again. Alex, how could you warn Zeke, but not us? There's no way he could have prepared his umbrella if you didn't. Why would I bother informing him? Stop lying. And Zeke, close your damned umbrella already, will you? Alexander and Ezekiel ignored Xavier. Alex just started walking towards the stairs while Ezekiel just gave the umbrella to one of his men. The moment Alex put his foot on the first step, he heard Xavier's words. Kai, did you see how he kissed her? You've seen how Alex usually kisses girls, right? Why did he give her such a simple kiss? Alexander halted and looked at Xavier who was obviously talking loud enough for Alex to hear him. Xavier, have you ever tasted fruit that was forced open before its time? I don't want to force my little fruit open like that because if I do, she'll end up tasting bad, he smirked and he nonchalantly ascended the stairs. Backslash Abigail sprinted into her room and shut it behind her. She leaned on it for a while with a dazed expression, as if her thoughts were a million miles away from her body. The scene that happened just moments ago kept replaying in her head like a movie. To her, it was much more overwhelming than any movie she ever watched and anything she had ever imagined. She remembered how his lips felt when it first landed on hers and her heart just wouldn't stop trying to jump from inside her chest, as if it was currently playing a game of jump ropes. Touching her lips, Abby mumbled. So that's how a kiss feels. She thought that it was truly so wonderful and magical. She immediately ran to the bedside table and took out her wishlist notebook. She only just noticed that her room was actually still dry when her hair dripped water on top of the bedside table. When she saw that, she then looked around her room in shocked surprise. She thought that the whole mansion would have been drenched but maybe the sprinklers only activated on the floor that the fire alarm was triggered on. Pulling her attention back to what she was doing, she opened her notebook and she couldn't stop smiling as she marked off the third item off her list. She briefly thought that she should do something to thank Alex for the surprise. Her first kiss was very much better than what she had ever dreamed of. She then took out her other diary and started frantically writing down her first kiss experience before she forgot even the tiniest detail. She spent a good time on that before heading to the shower to get ready for work. There was a dreamy look and a wide smile on her face the entire time and her heart was still thumping wildly the whole time. She had to take a few deep breaths and forcefully stop herself from picturing it over and over again before her heart finally calmed down. Once she settled down her heartbeat, she left her room and headed downstairs. As she walked down the staircase, the scene slowly came into view. Her mouth dropped and her eyes gradually widened at the mess. The room was like a scene from the movie, Jumanji, where the house was suddenly flooded, though everything was still in their right places, just drenched. She saw the maids working hard to dry off the furniture and she felt guilty. She apologized and picked up a mop and started to help with the cleanup but the servants politely asked her to stop, saying she was an honored guest and it would put their household to shame if they let her do such a thing. She felt that the maids prided themselves on their work from what they said and so she reluctantly let the mop go. Charles saw her and immediately came to get her and led her into the dining hall which was surprisingly already cleaned up and dried out. The table was only set for one and she ate her breakfast alone. She was told that the master and the guests had already left, something that surprised Abby again. What, already? Once she finished her breakfast, she then left the house and went straight to the orphanage. When she got there, she looked at her schedule for the day and saw that there was an appointment to go to the hospital with one of the children at the orphanage that afternoon. 
Little Betty had some sort of heart disease and Abby had volunteered to accompany the little girl to the hospital for her weekly checkups. Abby obviously had a soft spot in her heart for her because she understood the little girl's situation. She was still so young, just seven years old, and she was already suffering. Abby felt her heart break a little for the poor child who was dealt such a hand in life. In the hospital, Abby waited anxiously. Each time they came here, she would hope for the best outcome but time and time again, she was met with disappointment. When the doctor walked towards her, shaking his head, Abby felt the disappointment settle within her yet again. Their conclusion was the same. The little girl's only option to survive was a heart transplant and unfortunately, that was something the orphanage could never afford. Even if they did manage to get enough money, there were no guarantees that there would be a suitable donor. In short, it was hopeless. Unfortunately, the little girl had the same fate as her, and just like her, her time was about to end sooner than they would have wanted. This sweet little Betty, this cute, kind-hearted, beautiful little girl was going to die soon as well. This world was indeed very unfair. Just what did this little girl do to deserve such a fate? She started to feel angry at the cruel and heartless world they lived in. Why? Why did it have to be like this? After they left the hospital, Abby called the orphanage to tell them that she was going to take the little girl out somewhere. Abby wanted to do something for her. Do you have somewhere you want to go? Abby asked her as she knelt before her. Hmm. I want ice cream, she said so innocently and enthusiastically that Abby nearly cried for this brave little girl. Instead, she smiled at her brightly and pinched the little girl's cheek playfully. Got it darling. Let's go on a hunt for the most delicious ice cream today. Yay! They drove around until Abby found a large ice cream store. They went inside and Abby bought little Betty the biggest scoop of ice cream she could. Abby was so focused on making the girl happy that she had forgotten about everything else. She just wanted to fulfill any wishes this girl had, similar to how Alex was helping her fulfill her own list of wishes. Did you like the ice cream? Yep, they're super delicious. Thank you, Abby. Her smile was so bright and Abby couldn't help but squeeze the super cute little girl in her arms. I'm glad. Was there anywhere else you want to go or something else you want to do? I think I'd like to have a date with you at the park, she said cutely. Is that all? Are you sure? Abby prompted her. Amen, the little girl said with a nod. Abby could only shake her head at the girl's simple request. She wondered if little Betty had any larger dreams as she took the girl's hand and headed towards the park. Abby was pulled back to the present when the little girl started talking about this book that the caretaker at the orphanage read to her last night. The story was of Little Red Riding Hood. The little girl kept up her monologue in between licking the melting ice cream in her hand until they found a park bench. Abby, thank you for staying with me today. I'm so happy. I'm not sad that I have no parents. I'm happy as long as I have you. She then hugged Abby tightly and Abby embraced her back. Little Betty was such a sweet, precious girl. Ever since Abby found out about Little Betty's condition, she wished that a miracle would happen so that this little girl could at least be saved. Even though it seemed like miracles didn't really exist anymore, there was no miracle for her mother, after all and she knew that there would be no miracle for her either. Still, she wished for it because maybe, just maybe, a miracle would happen for little Betty. As she hugged the little girl, Abby saw a cotton candy booth across the road. She pulled away from their embrace and asked the little girl, Do you want some cotton candy? The little girl was a foodie like her so of course, she nodded enthusiastically. 
Abi looked around and saw that there weren't many people around the park so she decided that it was safe for little Betty to stay on the bench. She didn't like to exhaust little Betty, especially with her condition. Besides, the booth was not too far away. She would be back in no time. Stay here, okay? Wait for me and don't move while I go by the cotton candy, Abby told her. Once the girl nodded and made a promise to wait for her on the bench, Abby finally stood up and walked towards the candy booth. Abby kept checking on the little girl as she reached the candy booth and saw that the little girl was also looking at her as she sat on the bench with her little legs swinging in and out. Abby gave her a little wave and she received a wave back. The sky was starting to change color, from yellow to a reddish hue, indicating that it was almost twilight, but Abby, who was now busy with the vendor, still didn't take note of the time. Once the pink cotton candy was in her hand, Abby smiled at the little girl who was still patiently waiting on the bench as she walked towards the pedestrian lane. However, she took just three steps when suddenly, a fast car whipped past her, barely missing her. It didn't hit her but Abby fell backwards like a leaf being blown away by a strong wind. She, along with the cotton candy, fell on the ground as the car that came out of nowhere, screeched away from the scene. Oh God! What the hell's wrong with that driver? People who saw what happened started cursing the driver of that car who didn't even bother to stop, while some old ladies walked towards her and helped her up. Are you alright? They asked and Abby finally snapped from the shock. Her heart was still thumping hard from the adrenaline rush as what happened finally registered in her brain. It all happened so fast. One second she was smiling, walking towards the little girl with cotton candy in her hands and in the next moment, she was on her backside from a near-miss car accident. She saw the cotton candy covered with dust on the ground and her head snapped towards the bench where she left little Betty. When she saw that Betty was already running towards her, she forced a smile towards the old ladies and brushed the dirt away from her backside. I'm fine. Thank you so much. She thanked them with a smile as Betty finally reached her. Abby. Are you okay? She asked, worried as she clung on her leg. Abby immediately bent down and hugged the girl. Making this girl worry was the last thing she wanted to do. I'm fine, baby. I actually avoided the car, aren't I great? Haha <laughs> she grinned at the worried little girl to let her see that she was okay. She could see the little girl's chest moving in and out rapidly as if she was about to have a panic attack, so Abby immediately coaxed her to calm her down. This big sis of yours can avoid even the fastest car. Look, I'm not even hurt, she continued and she let the girl examine her. When little Betty saw that she had no wounds, her face started to relax and her breathing began to slow down, causing Abby to heave a long sigh of relief. Ah, oh, oh, the candy. I'll go buy you another one. Abby immediately focused her attention towards the candy. The little girl looked at it and bit her little lips before she turned to Abby. It's okay, Abby. I don't want cotton candy anymore, she said as she caressed Abby's face as if she was trying to coax her big sister instead, causing Abby to chuckle. Ah, you're the sweetest. Sweeter than any cotton candy. Abby smiled and hugged her and as she did so, she felt her heartbeat stabilize so she finally stood up. Okay. We should probably head back before it gets too dark, shouldn't we? She said and when the girl nodded, Abby called a cab. She was about to tell the driver to bring them to the orphanage when her eyes fell on the digital clock on the cab's dashboard. Her eyes immediately widened. Oh no. Her curfew. Alex's cold and stern voice saying that he will punish her began playing in her ears and Abby began to panic. It was only her third day and she was already going to break one of his rules. 
Panicking, Abby immediately told the driver a different address, the address to Alex's house. She called the orphanage during the taxi ride home and told them that she was going to be dropping Betty off a little late. Of course, the people at the orphanage didn't mind at all since Abby had been known to even bring little Betty over to her house during some weekends. Finally, the car stopped in front of the huge house, keenly aware that darkness had started to set in. She was late. She bit her lips hard and she couldn't help but feel nervous as she approached the house. Once the two entered the door, Abby's eyes immediately flew towards the fireplace. Alexander was right there, sitting like a bored king as always. His fingers were moving, tapping on the couch's arm, as if he was counting the movement of the clock secondhand. Abby was afraid that the man would emit his deadly aura again without warning so she whispered to little Betty to stay by the door and wait for her. The little girl nodded and Abby finally walked silently towards the man whose back was facing her. When Abby was just about to reach him, she saw his fingers become still and then his cold, deep voice rang in her ears. You're late, Abigail, were the words that welcomed her. He didn't even turn to look at her, as Abby expected. She suddenly felt chills the instant his words rang inside the big hall, but she didn't halt in her tracks. She continued walking towards him until she was right before him. Alex raised his cold eyes and gazed up to her. The jellyfish was incredibly freezing. His intense gaze was reeking with cold darkness, showing his extreme displeasure. Um... Alex, I... I have someone with me right now so see can you scold me later. She has a weak heart so I don't want her to get scared. Please, she pleaded, cupping her hands together, forcing Alex to close his eyes. This girl, didn't she feel anything? How could she still speak to him like this when he was already in this state? Did this little lamb really not have any fear in her at all? Alexander's urge to punish her intensified. However, Abby misread his gesture. She thought that the man had given in so she quickly called Betty to come over. The little girl stood right next to her, clinging on to Abby as if she was her lifeline, and took a quick peek at Alex. Hey Alex, this is Betty, Abby tried to distract him and the man finally looked down and saw something clinging on his little lamb's legs. He creased his brows as he looked at the small little thing blinking at him and Alex's coldness somehow dissipated a little. Betty. Say hi to Alex, she encouraged the little girl and Betty blinked before she looked at him. She then slightly bowed at Alex as she spoke. Hello, Mr. Alex. I'm Betty, nice to meet you. She smiled and Alex just quietly stared at the little girl for a while before he moved and faced her. Nice to meet you too, little Betty, he said and Abby's tense shoulders finally relaxed. Are you Abby's friend? she asked, slightly tilting her head and Alex's lips finally curved up. What do you think? I think, you might be a new friend because this is the first time I have seen you. I know all of Abby's friends, the little girl said proudly. Alexander chuckled as he leaned back. Her new friend, huh? Well, your observation isn't wrong little Betty, but... He leaned forward towards her again. Are you sure I'm only her new friend? Alex, um... Abby tried to intervene, but... Let her answer first, Abigail. Alex told her as his gaze remained locked onto the little girl. Little Betty looked up to Abby before she answered the man. You are new, but I think you are also a special friend, she replied and Abby's eyes widened as she looked down at the little girl. Why would you say that? Alexander seemed intrigued. Because, I think you are the first male friend Abby has. Abby doesn't have boyfriends, only girls. So that's why I think you are special, she answered and Alexander smiled. He looked satisfied and it seemed like he liked little Betty for that. 
Good girl, was all he said and he finally looked at Abby. Alex, can I return her to the orphanage first? I will explain to you once I'm back. Why return her? Didn't you get the permission to take her with you? Of course I did. Then it's fine. Let her stay here for the night. It's already dark out, Abigail. But. No buts. I won't permit you to go out, he said with an absolute no-nonsense tone and Abby knew that she wouldn't be able to persuade him anymore. Without a choice Abby called the orphanage and thankfully, they agreed. The two girls then went upstairs to clean up and get changed. As they walked up the staircase, little Betty looked at Abby with wide eyes. Wow. Abby, is this a castle? I feel like I'm inside a real castle. Betty was extremely excited. Abby let little Betty go first and she went after she finished helping the little girl put on a fresh set of clothes. Luckily for Abby, she had with her a spare set of clothes for little Betty as she always carried spares with her whenever she went out with any of the children, just in case so this wasn't an issue. Great forward thinking, Abby, she mentally patted herself on the back. Once they were ready, they headed back downstairs. The moment they entered the dining room, three pairs of eyes greeted them and one didn't even bother to look up, as if he couldn't care less. Of course, the boisterous one was the first to say something. Oh, we have a new member in the family. So cute. What's your name? Xavier asked. My name is Betty. Nice to meet you all. Betty introduced herself and smiled at Xavier. I'm Xavier, baby girl and this guy here is Kai. Xavier beamed at her while Kai gave her a small, kind smile. Betty's eyes surveyed the two men for a while before her gaze fell on Ezekiel Cheen. She then turned and walked towards him and poked him gently on his leg to grab his attention. Uncle, what's your name? The man silently raised his eyes and looked at the girl before him. Hey, don't ignore a lady's question. Alex's voice was mocking. Ezekiel was all he said before he looked down again, as if he was an unwilling participant. Dinner seemed to be laid out and ready for them already so they all took their places around the table and started to eat the always scrumptious meal made by the kitchen staff. Betty couldn't believe the amount of food that was laid out on the table. Holy moly! I have never seen this much food in my life. Way you 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 am mm, was the thought that ran through her head. She was used to the food from the orphanage and while it wasn't fancy like this, it was certainly nutritious and still yummy. But the little foodie certainly wasn't going to let this opportunity pass by her. Abby saw the millions of stars in the girl's eyes and she couldn't help but chuckle as she placed a heaped spoonful of food on little Betty's plate. She definitely understood what she was feeling. This was, after all, how she also felt when she first got here. Knowing how much of a foodie this little girl was, she made sure to give her at least a small portion of every dish so that she could have a taste of all of the dishes, much to little Betty's delight. Dinner was much more lively than usual, with Xavier and Kai asking little Betty a lot of questions, as if they had never spent time with a little child before, and little Betty answered them all with her cheerful, bubbly, little voice surrounding them like a warm blanket. Once they were finished with their meal, Abby and little Betty patted their food babies with satisfaction. They looked at each other and as if some secret communication passed between them, they both laughed out loud while the men looked at them with curiosity. Abby just shook her head and offered no explanation. After some time, they all rose and headed to the large living room. Alex and Abby sat next to each other on the largest couch while little Betty, Xavier and Kai sat on the couch across them. Zeke, ever the outsider, sat on the furthest single chair from the rest. Do you have any toys or games here? Little Betty piped up. The two men immediately looked at Alex, 
as if they were about to ask him this question, but then they looked at each other and shook their head. What were they thinking? Of course he wouldn't have any kids' toys or games in this house. Sorry, Betty, but we don't have toys or games, Xavier said sadly. Oh, okay. Do you have any paper? We could play rubbish ball. Do you know how to play rubbish ball? Little Betty asked the two men, who just looked very confused. Rubbish ball? What kind of game is that? Xavier asked. It's when you crumple pieces of paper into a ball and try to shoot them inside the rubbish bin. Little Betty explained. Oh. That sounds like fun. Xavier said while Kai just nodded. The two then went in search of paper and a rubbish bin. It didn't take them long to find the items needed for the game and so within minutes, the quiet house became very noisy as the three of them played their game. There were shrieks and claps and hoorays as it went on and Abby, who could never just sit and watch while kids played games, got up to join them. Alex and Zeke stayed where they were as they looked on with boredom written on their faces. They definitely did not have any intention of joining in. After some time, the game finally slowed down. It seemed like everyone was finally starting to run out of gas. Abigail, come over, Alex ordered and Abby immediately walked towards him. He pulled her beside him and whispered in her ear. It's time for your punishment, Abigail, he uttered and Abby swallowed. She thought that Alex would let her go tonight. But... Alex, B. Betty is here. She looks like she is ready to go to sleep, he simply said. As Abby looked at the little girl who was rubbing her eyes and yawning, she knew he was right. I'm sure one of the boys can handle putting her to bed, he then continued. Oh, okay, she agreed but Abby worriedly tugged Alex's shirt. Alex, she needs someone to read a book to her for her to go to sleep, Abby said. Charles, get me a book, a pillow, and a blanket, he ordered and after a while, Charles came back holding a pillow, a blanket, and an old book of Grimm's fairy tales. Alex took the book and walked towards the little girl. He squatted before her and said, Little Betty, Abigail, and I have an important matter to settle so one of these three will put to bed, okay? Alex told her and the little girl looked at Abby before she just nodded. He then showed the book to her. Little Betty, you can choose one person to read this book to you, he told her and little Betty just blinked. Who will you choose? Little Betty looked at Kai and Xavier. Xavier was miming at her to choose him but Betty's gaze just passed through him until her eyes fell on the lone man sitting at the far end of the room. She pointed her finger towards Ezekiel Chin, surprising everyone except Alex. Even Ezekiel himself was a little taken aback, although his face remained blank. Nice choice, little Betty, Alex seemed satisfied with her choice. He looked at Zeke with a taunting smile and before Abby could protest, Alex was already walking towards Zeke. He held Betty's hand in one hand and the book with the other. Once they stood before the quiet Zeke, Alex looked down at him with a smile on his face. He bent down and put the book on Zeke's lap, almost with a flourish, before he straightened up. Take care of little Betty for a while, Zeke. Without even waiting for the man's response, Alex patted the girl's head as he asked Charles to give Zeke the blanket and the pillow. Little Betty smiled and voluntarily jumped on the space next to Zeke. She took the pillow and positioned it as close to Zeke as possible and she quietly settled down as she stared at the man, waiting expectantly for him to start reading to her. Alexander smiled at the girl's behavior before he looked at Zeke with a mischievous yet stern look in his eyes. I'll leave her to you then, Zeke. Start reading to her now because it's already quite late, he said before turning to walk away. He walked straight towards Abby and grabbed her wrist, dragging her up the stairs. 
Albi kept looking back at the duo as she was still a bit worried. Alex, are you sure? I think it might be better if we leave her with Kai, she said and Alex halted on the stairs. Stop worrying, little fruit. Trust me, Zeke is the best choice for babysitting her. I don't actually trust those two that much. They'll make her cry or treat her like a doll. She won't be able to sleep early if she's with them. But... Shu, look at her. She likes Zeke. Don't worry, Zeke will never harm even a single strand of her hair, he said and Abby just blinked. Alex's absolute trust in Zeke was not something she expected, especially regarding this matter. Abby looked at Betty and when she saw that the girl was smiling as she looked up at the cold man. She looked around and saw the butler and maids were also standing by so she felt at ease. However, her ease only lasted for a minute because as soon as the two arrived on the third floor, Abby's heart began to thump. She began to feel nervous. Was he really going to punish her? Abby's steps began to slow. She walked like a turtle while Alex just walked elegantly in front of her, like always, as she followed behind him. When the man finally stopped in front of her room, Abby was a few steps behind him. He glanced at her before he pushed her room's door open and entered like it was his own. Abigail took a deep breath, not once but thrice, before she entered. Alex was already sitting on her bed, loosening his necktie and unbuttoning the first two buttons of his shirt. He was doing that in an outrageously, devastatingly sexy and alluring way. His eyes smoldered as he looked at her as he moved gracefully like a magnificent beast. Come over, Abigail, he ordered and his deep voice made Abby swallow as she moved slowly towards him. Um, Alex, I can explain. I. Before Abby could continue, Alexander pulled her close. His large hand easily gripped both of her hands while his free hand grabbed her chin. Rules are rules, Abigail. You broke one of the rules so you'll need to be punished. No excuses, he whispered and Abby felt chills run down her spine. I have to teach you a lesson, Abigail. I can see you're not taking my simple rules seriously. Did you think I was going to just let it go because this was your first offense? If that's what you think, then you're wrong, little lamb. I'll have to show you now or else you will think that my rules are nothing but words of bluff. The words that resonated in her ears sent small shivers through her body. Abigail swallowed again. Are you going to hurt me? She asked and her lips trembled a little. Alexander's lips twisted to a faint smile before it abruptly faded. His eyes blazed with ice-cold fire, so deadly and dangerous, but at the same time filled with something different that Abby couldn't fathom. Do you want me to hurt you? He asked and Abby's throat dried up. No, Alex. She shook her head. Her voice was barely a whisper. The little lamb finally showed a little hint of fear. Are you scared? He asked again as his vivid eyes pierced hers. Nonetheless, Abby looked at him back straight on. Her gaze was even deeper than ever. A little, she replied and Alex's eyes squinted. A little, ha. Huh? But you're already expecting me to hurt you, right? She nodded. A little. What do you mean by a little, huh, Abigail? I think your punishment will hurt me a little. A throaty chuckle left Alex's lips as he grabbed her chin and rubbed her lips gently, not taking his eyes off hers even for a second. Tell me, what kind of punishment were you expecting? He asked and a short silence followed. Abby straightened her tense shoulders, took one deep breath before she calmly opened her lips and told him what was running through her mind. That, you will have me stand there facing the wall for a long time, or, have me run a lap or two or three outside, or, lock me in my room for a couple of hours, or, have me write pages and pages of an apology letter, or, have me go clean the backyard. 
Alexander's smirk had long faded since she uttered her first phrase. This girl, was she trying to distract him? Did she think that his rules were some kind of classroom rules and now he became a teacher in her eyes? Despite being rendered speechless once again because of another weird surprise in the middle of this situation, Alexander didn't let this naive little fruit take the better of him. Abigail, how about spanking? Did that ever come to your mind? His voice was damn deep and alluring, like the voice of a devil in disguise, luring people to their demise. Spanking. Abigail's eyes widened a little. She was shocked but the reason behind her surprise was actually because she didn't expect Alex to say that word. Alex, I'm already an adult. I'm not a child that needs to be spanked, she argued. She looked like she couldn't believe him. What if I told you that adults could be spanked too? His words made Abby's jaw instantly fall. Ah oh, really? She gasped, looking at him with disbelief. Alex sexily nodded at her and waited in anticipation for her next reaction. However, Abigail suddenly pressed her lips tightly as if she was trying very hard not to grin. Well, now that she thought about it, adults could also be spanked. She never saw it happen before her eyes, but what came into her imagination was the comedy movie she watched before where an old man was being playfully slapped on his butt by his wife because he was fooling around. Imagining an adult being slapped on the butt was a comedic scene to her. Alexander was speechless. He didn't know why the girl was suddenly looking like she was enjoying a private joke. What's so funny, Abigail? He asked, as his eyes narrowed and Abby cleared her throat before seriously staring back at him. I just imagined a couple spanking each other and I found it amusing. I watched a movie where one grandma slaps her husband's butt and then he covers them up and runs away from her like he was running on hot coals, she told him and Alexander lost it. He couldn't believe this. No matter how serious the situation was, how could this girl just turn everything around like this? From the moment she was alone with him, she should have been at his mercy, knowing that she was about to get punished. She was supposed to step back in fear upon hearing the word spanking and yet, here she was, smiling so innocently as if this wasn't a serious matter. Even more annoying was the fact that she was even telling him about a comedy show she watched, saying that spanking was amusing. Was this the way her survival instincts were wired? It if was, then she had evolved to a higher level because it did a hella good job killing the vibes. See could it be that you're planning to spank me? I is that my punishment? Her eyes looked at him with surprise. She even looked relieved. If that's so, please go ahead, she said, thinking that it would be like the funny scenes in the movies. The old grandma didn't seem to smack the grandpa that hard so of course she didn't mind being spanked like that. So she positioned herself in front of him, sideways and even bent down a little to give him access to her cute little behind. Alexander couldn't help but pinch the skin between his brows. This was utterly different. This was not even close to the ideal punishment scenario. She was supposed to be begging him not to spank her, and yet, here she was, suddenly offering herself like this. How the hell could he even, could he even? Alexander had never been in a situation like this before. This girl was a whole different species of the human race and he couldn't figure how to handle her. She was just so. Now his mind was also messed up. He didn't know why but he suddenly thought of a little poor literal fluffy lamb being spanked by him. This was simply outrageous and ridiculously over the top. She exuded such a kind of innocence and purity that made anyone desire to take advantage of her vulnerabilities and weaknesses, but she wasn't actually as easy as that. She had her very own strange and weird way of fighting back against the predators that want to eat her. And she was doing that so smoothly, almost without even trying. This girl was just becoming more and more unbelievable by the day and it never ceased to render him speechless. 
Alexander could only curse inwardly and in the next second, he suddenly yanked her and pinned her down on the bed. He finally realized that this girl wasn't someone he could treat the way he treated others. He couldn't even make himself imagine spanking this little lamb anymore. Abigail, I'm not going to spank you like those old damned movies with old grandmas and grandpas. That wasn't the kind of. He stopped mid-sentence, almost groaning in frustration. His mood had become cold again. This man was so quick to change his colors, it was hard to keep up with him. Never mind that. I've prepared an interesting punishment for you, he then smiled wickedly. Don't worry, little lamb. I will make sure that you won't feel any pain. I will make sure you will regret breaking my rules and that you will never want to do it again. I will make you beg me to punish you more, he whispered as his breath caressed her face. Abby was so confused with the words he was saying. She did not understand what he was saying at all. It was like he was suddenly talking in a different language she didn't understand. Why on earth would she want to beg for more punishment? That just didn't make any sense. She could see the look in his eyes had changed yet again. He had become a dangerous beast. He always looked dangerous but this time, Abby felt really nervous with him being like this. Her heart wouldn't stop beating like crazy even as she tried to convince herself that everything was just fine. Alex took her hand and kissed her finger before he moved both her hands above her head. He was about to kiss her when he noticed her wince the moment he intertwined his hand on hers. Abigail. I haven't even started yet and you already look like you're in pain, he whispered and he was about to continue when the girl's face twisted the moment he squeezed her hands tighter. His eyes narrowed and when he looked at her hand, he saw the scratches. The lust in his eyes slowly dimmed and was replaced by dark coldness. What happened? Where and how did you get these scratches? Meanwhile in the living room on the ground floor, little Betty was still wide awake. She was lying there, waiting patiently for Uncle Zeke to start reading to her. Not only did Ezekiel not start reading the book to the little girl, he also ignored her as if she wasn't there. He just kept scanning the book that Alex gave him without a word. He didn't know why this girl had picked him to read her a bedtime story when the other two were obviously more willing. He didn't understand why this little girl wasn't scared of him when children always hid behind their mothers at the sight of him. Was this kid the same as that fearless Abigail girl? Uncle, uncle, why are you not talking to me? Uncle, you don't like talking don't you? Can you read the story out loud so I can hear? Uncle, please. Little Betty continued talking until Ezekiel Cheen's hand that was flipping the pages finally halted. Stop calling me, uncle. I'm not your uncle, he told her, his voice a little chilly. Then, what should I call you, she innocently asked. Big brother. I'm not your brother. Then, shall I call you Zeke, too? She smiled and the man silently let out a sigh. He didn't have any tolerance for this kind of thing. He knew that Alex did this on purpose. That man just wanted to torture him. Sleep, kid. You're not a baby to still be lulled to sleep by a bedtime story, he said blankly and little Betty's face became gloomy. She didn't speak anymore as she laid there next to him. Zeke glanced at her again when the girl didn't move or make sound, thinking that she finally fell asleep but to his surprise, the girl's eyes were still wide open. She was staring at the ceiling and blinking occasionally. Seeing that there was no sign of her going to sleep, Ezekiel pressed his temples and opened the book again. I will only read this once, kid. Listen carefully and sleep, he suddenly said and the girl looked up at him with big round, excited eyes. The man then started, once upon a time, a princess. He trailed off. For some reason, he couldn't continue. His expressionless face seemed to have hardened in frustration. However, 
he still remained calm. The girl looked at him with anticipation, waiting for what was coming next even though the man's voice was so painfully lifeless and toneless. A cat and mouse decide to live together and buy a pot of fat to get them through the winter. They decide to keep the pot under an altar at the church and to only use it if necessary. The cat makes up a story and says she's becoming a godmother in order to secretly visit the church, so she asks the mouse to stay and watch their place. The cat comes home and eventually becomes the godmother two more times. Each time, the mouse asks the name of the godchildren and the cat's responses are top off, half done, and all gone. The mouse doesn't catch on until they go to the church and sees the empty pot. The cat turns and eats the mouse. The End Ezekiel closed the book and looked at the girl but the girl's lips were parted and her big eyes were still wide open. Why aren't you asleep yet, he frowned. Uncle. I mean Mr. Zeke, that's not nice. You just summarized the story. She rose and took the book in his hand. You should do it like this, okay? She started reading the story so skillfully and it suddenly looked like little Betty was the one lulling the big man to sleep. The man pressed his temples once again like an old man with the world's burden on his shoulders and took the book from her hand. Fine, I'll read it like that so sleep now, he commanded and the girl at least listened to him. However, before she laid down she took the book and opened it to the page titled Cinderella. Ezekiel then started reading but he was nowhere near the same level as little girl's skills. His storytelling skill was, in fact, not even on the scale and could even be considered as being below zero. But despite his monotone and bored voice, Betty still slowly fell asleep. Back in Abby's room, the atmosphere had become below freezing as the cold statue waited for Abby's reply. Ah, oh, T this is nothing. I just tripped on the sidewalk. Technically, Abby told him the truth because she did trip on the sidewalk but she knew full well that a half-truth was still a lie. She was not trying to hide what had happened but for some reason she didn't know why but she didn't want to mention that a car almost hit her. But of course, the cold statue saw it because she was very, very bad at lying. Her face gave her straight away so he just said curtly, you just tripped, huh? His voice was cold as steel. Alex's eyes squinted at her. He then got up and grabbed the first aid kit. He sat down next to her and started cleaning her wounds. Abby was surprised as she looked at him. She didn't expect him to act this way. It almost looked like the beastly man was suddenly tamed as soon as she saw her scratches. This cold man being like this towards her made Abby's heart flutter. She couldn't believe that just a moment ago, this was the same man who looked like he was going to eat her alive, the same man who was just about to punish her. However, just as when Abby was thinking that the ice was starting to melt, Alex suddenly pressed on her wound using the cotton ball he was holding. Ouch, she winced. Alex, it hurts, she pleaded but the man didn't release the pressure. Abigail, are you really not going to tell me the truth? He asked and Abby's eyes widened. She looked at him and she was surprised at the darkness lurking in his eyes. He pressed on her scratches a little harder as Abby gaped at him and she winced again. Ah, oh. Alex, stop. I'll tell you. She finally gave in and the man let go. Good, he said before he lifted her hand and gently blew on the wound as if he was trying to soothe the pain he inflicted. Abigail was speechless. This jellyfish was truly unpredictable. Why was he like this? Now speak, little fruit. His tone was extremely demanding. With a sigh, she told him the truth, that she was about to cross the road when a random fast car drove past so close to her that it nearly hit her. She fell down and that was how she got the scratches. Abby saw his jaws clench and something flashed in his eyes, 
so quick that Abby almost missed it. He looked down and focused his attention on her palm. I, I am fine, though. These scratches are nothing, she immediately tried to reassure him, but the man continued his interrogation without looking at her face. What about the driver? Did you see his face? His voice was emotionless, as if he was a detective trying to get information from the victim. Aubie found his way of questioning strange to her. She also didn't understand why he was asking so seriously but his overbearing aura was forcing her to cooperate with him. He didn't stop and it happened so fast I didn't get a look at his face. You didn't see the plate number. She shook her head. I didn't see it but I think the car looks the same as that black car in the garage. Alex fell silent after that as if he had found his answer or as if he had finished taking all the necessary information. Still, there was something in his silence that made Abby feel like he was hiding something about this matter. Why were you trying to hide it from me? He asked again after a long while of silence. I wasn't trying to hide it. I just thought that this wasn't something important that you needed to know, she replied and Alex paused. He looked at her with a sharp gaze before he grabbed her chin. Listen carefully, little lamb. While you are here living with me, I am the one responsible for you, you understand? From today onwards, while you are staying in my house, don't hide this kind of thing from me, you get it? Abby blinked at him and eventually nodded. He finished tending to her wounds and he put the first aid kit back. Sleep now. Abigail. You now owe me 12 sessions and one punishment. That is your debt currently, little fruit. You need to heal these hands of yours quickly or else. He grabbed her chin and stared into her eyes with an aura of both danger and mischief. Or else, I can't guarantee if this little fragile body of yours will be able to handle it if you keep accumulating debts you can't pay. He walked towards the door and before he left, he said, I'll go get the kid. Downstairs. Alexander saw that the girl was already asleep next to Zeke. Alex walked towards the couch and as he drew closer, he gave Zeke one long, hard stare. It was as if there were many unspoken words conveyed with that one look. Without a word, he took the girl and brought him upstairs. Abigail was still awake when Alex entered her room with little Betty in his arms. He laid the little girl beside Abby before he left without a word. Good night, Alex, Abby said and the man halted for a moment, before he closed the door. Abby let out a sigh and finally closed her eyes. Her thoughts were full of Alex and his ever-changing moods until she finally fell asleep. She began to dream. In her dream, a certain mischievous demon was tickling her ear. She kept pushing the bully demon's hand away, but he was persistent. He even started to tease her cheeks, poking them as if he was picking a fight. The demon in her dream looked like Alex. Suddenly, Abby smelled something sweet hovering over her face so she bit the air as she imagined chomping on the delicious food before her. At that moment, Abby woke up and to her surprise, she felt something fleshy between her teeth. Her eyes widened as she saw Alex's face, looking at her in disbelief. Was she still dreaming? She slowly unclamped her teeth from Alex's hand and she finally noticed that it was already dawn. Gee good morning, Alex, she greeted and she tried to rise up. The man finally moved to give her room as he looked at the hand she just bit and he chuckled noisily as he shook his head. Little lamb, I really don't know what kind of creature you are anymore, he said and Abby blinked at him. You even bite during your sleep, huh? Do you eat people too while you're asleep? He asked meaningfully, but of course, the little lamb took his words literally. No. I don't, she immediately argued and Alex finally laughed. Ah, oh, never mind that. Get up and get changed. It's time for you to exercise. 
I'll wait for you outside. Make it quick, he said and he left without even waiting for her response. Without a choice, Abby quickly changed into exercising clothes. Little Betty was still asleep and Abby knew she wouldn't wake up for another hour or so, so she left her on the bed. Outside on the road, Abby was bent over, hand on top of her knees, panting and sweating from the exercise. The man was as unforgiving as he was the day before, acting like her strict coach. While she rested on that same bench from yesterday, Alex suddenly told her something she never expected to hear from him. Don't stay here tonight, Abigail, he said with all seriousness and Abby looked at him with confusion. Go home for now and come back tomorrow. Why? She asked, still surprised and confused. Because I'm not going to be home tonight. I'm going somewhere. Can't I stay here and wait? No, Abigail. I won't allow you to stay here when I'm not around. Abby's brows creased and she was about to say something but the man put his finger over her mouth and stopped her from speaking. Ah, it might also be better if I fetch you from your work tomorrow, now that I think about it, he said before he stood up. Let's go back. That kid might be looking for you now. Alex was about to take a step when Abby tugged his shirt. Wait, Alex. Um, are you leaving soon? Yes. I will drop you too at the orphanage on my way out. So you won't be able to fulfill my request today, she said sadly. Wait. That means this will become your debt to me, right? Alex was stunned. He couldn't believe that this girl turned around and used his own words against him. He just looked at her with disbelief written on his face while she looked up expectantly at him. Her eyes were full of so much hope that the stern words that he was about to say became stuck in his throat. You should be grateful that I am giving you time to heal your wounds, was all he said. He didn't deny nor did he agree, leaving it open for interpretation. So Abby, being the hopeful, innocent person that she was, looked on the bright side and inwardly celebrated that he didn't deny her words. Okay, she said cheerfully as she hopped up. She did her exercise routine on the way back home. She felt a little bit energized after that conversation but as they got closer to the mansion, Abby started to feel sad and her heart felt heavy, as if it was being weighed down by a ton of bricks. Abby didn't know why but she suddenly felt incredibly sad. Meanwhile, back in the mansion, Betty woke up to find herself alone in the room. She blinked and looked around as she remembered that she was sleeping in the magical castle that Abby was living in. She slowly got up and called out Abby's name but she got no response. She wondered where Abby was so she got off the bed and headed towards the door. She left the room and headed down the stairs, still calling out Abby's name. Luckily, Charles heard her and found the little girl before she became lost in the huge mansion. He told her that Abby had gone out to exercise and led the little girl to the dining hall instead so that she could eat breakfast. She followed the nice old grandpa to the dining hall and her eyes immediately lit up when she saw Mr. Zeke sitting at the table. She quickly gave him a big wave as she ran towards him. Mr. Zeke. Good morning, Mr. Zeke, she greeted as she dragged back the massive chair next to him so that she could climb up on it. Once she was on it, she faced Zeke and started asking him questions. Are you having breakfast, Mr. Zeke? What are you eating? Is it yummy? Can I have some too? Little Betty looked at Zeke with enthusiasm but Zeke didn't utter a word. It seemed like he had tuned her out. Little Betty's face fell a bit when she got no reaction from Mr. Zeke so she turned her attention to breakfast. Little Betty then tried to reach for the food but she was too small to reach anything on the big table. She glanced at him as her little hand tugged his sleeve softly to try and get his attention and it worked. Zeke finally looked at the little girl before him. 
Without wasting the opportunity, she quickly asked him, Mr. Zeke, can you please put a pancake on my plate? I can't reach it. She then stretched out her hands to show him that her arms were nowhere near long enough to reach the food on the table. In fact, they barely made it past the plate laid out in front of her, even though she was sitting on her knees. Sighing like he was having to do a tedious chore, Zeke reached out for a pancake and placed it on her plate. Thank you, Mr. Zeke. Little Betty then picked up her cutlery and started to eat the pancake but it seemed that she ate too fast and choked a little on a piece. She started coughing hard and Zeke immediately looked up to see the choking child in front of him. He immediately patted her on the back and then poured out a glass of water for her. His heartbeat accelerated as a slight sense of panic washed over him, mainly at the thought of having to explain to Alex if something happened to the child while he was around, but there might also be a slight hint of worry for this little girl who didn't seem to want to run away in fear of him. Here, drink this, he told her as he held out the glass of water to her. Little Betty took it and gulped the whole glass of water down in one go. Once little Betty put the glass down, the blockage was gone and she could breathe again. However, in the next second, big fat tears started rolling down her cheeks and she leapt into Zeke's arms. She wrapped her arms tightly around his neck as she sobbed and sobbed. That experience was terrifying for the little girl. Zeke sat frozen on his chair, his arms hanging in mid-air, as if he was unsure of what to do with them. The girl's sobs were loud in his ear and he felt his shirt getting wet from her tears but he didn't know what to do to calm her down. He had never spent time with any children before let alone crying ones. What was he supposed to do? His eyes met Charles's gaze and Charles mimed to seek to hug the child and pat her back gently. Zeke followed his actions without thinking about it. He wrapped his arms around the child and patted her back. This action, although it looked very awkward to whoever was watching, seemed to have worked because little Betty's sobs slowed and quieted down. After another minute, she had completely stopped crying. This was the scene that greeted Abby and Alex when they finally got back to the mansion. Abby's eyes were wide with shock while Alex's expression was again filled with mischief as he smirked at Zeke with a taunting smile. Alex didn't stay around and he headed up to shower and change while Abby walked towards the little girl and took her from Zeke's arms. He gladly let Abby take the little girl before he too, immediately left the scene, as if he was a robber that was about to be caught on the scene by the cops. Alex, Abigail and little Betty were all sitting in Alex's car, with Abby in the passenger seat and little Betty in the back seat, as they headed towards the orphanage. Little Betty had told Abby what happened during breakfast and Abby was glad that the little girl was alright. She felt bad for leaving her alone that morning and promised herself that she wouldn't do that again. The car ride wasn't as silent as Alex would have liked because little Betty regaled them with this story and that story during the whole trip. Abby was attentive to her but she was also aware that these would be the last moments she would get to spend with Alex before he left. She kept glancing at the man but she also knew that she couldn't disturb him while driving. Finally, they arrived at the orphanage. Abby watched Betty enter the gate before she turned and looked at Alex. She was standing by the car's window, looking down at him. Take care, Alex, she said as she reluctantly raised her hand to wave him goodbye. Alexander smiled seeing her meek actions and he gestured at her to move her face closer. Little lamb, what should a good girlfriend do when her boyfriend is about to leave? He asked softly and Abby blinked. There was only one answer that appeared in her mind. And thus, the next moment, she landed a soft, sweet kiss on his cheek. Alex stared at her quietly for a few seconds as soon as she pulled away. He looked like he wanted to say something but he changed his mind. Never mind. I'll teach you more about this once I return, he told her and his eyes became serious. 
Don't do anything stupid while I'm away, okay, little fruit, he added and without waiting for her response, he accelerated and left. Abby faced her day as usual. She was doing fine and she enjoyed the children's play that morning. However, she couldn't stop thinking about Alex. The thought that she was not going to see him at the end of the day made her feel a little depressed. She already wanted him to come back. So, how far did you two go as of now? Kelly started her interrogation. The two were sitting in their favorite cafe because Kelly had come to the orphanage a while ago to see her and of course, to chit chat with her about her life with that Mr. Chin guy. He kissed me, she replied, blushing while Kelly's mouth dropped. Oh, he kissed you. Okay, and... And it was so wonderful, Kelly. He gave me a magical first kiss. Kelly was confused. Wait, Abby, what I'm asking is... You guys already went further than kissing, right? Abby blinked at her and just seeing that look made Kelly feel like bumping her head on the table. Like, she even asked and Kelly lost it. Like as sex, Abby. She blurted out with some frustration and gladly, no one heard her. Abby's face immediately burned red. Kelly had already subtly warned her about this on the day she decided to live in Alex's house, but she couldn't believe that her friend was asking her this. Ahem, have you two already gone that far? Kelly whispered, but to her shocked surprise, Abby shook her head. You haven't. AAB, are you sure? Kelly looked like she couldn't believe it. I am sure, Kelly. Um, can we not talk about that? I want to tell you about my first kiss, Kelly. She beamed and before Kelly could recover from the shocking news, that they actually still haven't done the deed despite living together, Abby started narrating her magical experience, with a smile as blinding as the sun. H. He did that. That man. Inside the house. Kelly exclaimed. Yes. When Abby confirmed it, Kelly looked like she was a plant that suddenly withered. Her head fell and bumped on the table. She couldn't believe it. She knew that her friend wasn't lying but, she couldn't believe that there was still men like that Mr. Chin out there in this world. How could he be so romantic? Ah, my poor single heart. T to the power of T, Kelly could only cry without tears. I'm so happy for you. I think you found the right guy. I apologize for thinking that he's a demon. It looks like he is far from the cold-hearted man I envisioned. You're so lucky, Abby. I think the heavens gave you that guy to make you happy. Kelly hugged her friend tightly. She felt a little jealous because Abby just experienced something that only seemed to happen in movies, but she was genuinely happy for her. No one in this world deserved that kind of experience but this innocent and lovely girl. She deserved all the goodness that this world could offer. Thank you, Kelly. Abby felt a little bit emotional about Kelly's reaction. She knew that Kelly was a true friend who cared about her and wanted to see her happy so Abby was very thankful to have such a great friend by her side. So, are you going back home tonight? Kelly asked and Abby nodded. Mm. I miss my dad and my grandma and grandpa, she answered with a smile. The two stayed at the cafe for a while longer and chatted about other things before Kelly sent Abby back home. Her family was overjoyed that Abby came back prior to the day that she told them. They missed their princess and now that she was here, everyone was happy. Abby was also very happy to be back because she really missed them a lot. They enjoyed their dinner and after that, as Abby was washing the dishes, her grandmother came and talked to her while helping her dry the plates. You look lovely, Abigail. I can tell that you're enjoying your life in the city, her grandma told her and Abby looked at her in surprise. Honey, 
Did you find someone you like? She asked again and Abby didn't know, but her heart suddenly accelerated. She even blushed as Alex's face immediately appeared in her head. Looking at her with loving eyes, her grandmother smiled. I can see it in your eyes, my girl. You were always a happy child, but I can see a different kind of happiness in your eyes now. She caressed Abby's back and Abby became speechless. She couldn't believe that her grandmother saw right through her just like that. It's okay. I know you've always been scared, that's why I'm happy to see you enjoying yourself. If it makes you happy, then, don't hesitate and go for it. Remove the shackles around your heart, and don't hold back. There's no need to be scared. Face the world and live the way you want, okay? Her grandmother said and Abby instantly felt emotional. She hugged her dear grandmother and she felt her immense support. It was as if she had sent her some fighting spirit and bravery and strength to keep going and Abby was so thankful for having a grandmother like her. Thank you, Grandma. I love you, she whispered and they both smiled at each other. It was a pleasant morning when Abby woke up. She spent the remaining time with her family and had a happy breakfast with them. Her dad drove her back to the orphanage. On the drive there, the father and daughter talked about Abby's life in the city until they reached their destination. Her father didn't stop encouraging her, telling her to live her life happily before he left. Abby stood there, waving to her dad as she watched her father's car disappear from her eyes. She let out a sigh and smiled before she entered the building and went to work. The day was lively and joyful as always inside the orphanage. The kids and the people inside were all like her family as well and she always felt good working with them. She was glad that it was busy that day to keep her mind somewhat occupied because she couldn't stop thinking about Alex. She already lost some sleep last night because of him and now that she was at work, she couldn't believe that his face was still distracting her, until in the end, she found herself waiting for twilight to come. The day was busy and yet she felt like it was dragging on. Indeed, it was true that time slowed down like a wounded turtle when waiting for something to come but flew fast like a bird when you weren't. Finally, twilight came. Abby stepped out of the building and looked at the mini children's park in front. Her eyes were drawn to the empty swing and she silently walked towards it. She sat on it and swung a little, just letting her body sway lightly. Abby was thinking about Alex again. She had tried to call Alex last night but for some reason, he was out of reach. Kai was also the same. She couldn't help but feel uneasy. The thoughts, what if he will not come back, what if he will not appear before her anymore, flooded her mind but she couldn't help it. For the first time, Abby was extremely bothered with the fact that she really didn't know anything about Alex. All she knew was that he was related to the tycoon, Ezekiel Chin. Everyone knew that Ezekiel Chin was a self-made man. She also read a magazine saying that he was an orphan. Knowing this made Abby feel confused when Alex told her that Ezekiel was his close kin. But then, she shrugged those thoughts away because at the time, she thought that it was fine for Alex not to tell her anything. But she was wrong. She wasn't fine with it at all. She wanted to know more about him. Who were his family? Where were they? Was he living in that huge mansion for a long time now or did he just decide to live in it lately? Abigail couldn't help but feel scared. She was scared that one day, Alex would just disappear like an enchanting phantom she just met in her dreams. Abby let out a deep sigh and looked up at the sky. She missed Alex so badly. It was only about 34 hours since she last saw him and she already felt like weeks had passed by. She wasn't waiting for her time to end anymore. She was no longer thinking about the opportunities that life had taken from her. Her mind and heart were now only thinking about a particular someone, 
and waiting for that someone to come back. She realized that her life had really changed. At that moment, while Abby was lost in her thoughts, she suddenly felt a chill coming from behind her. She was initially excited because she thought that Alex was finally here but after a second, she realized that this wasn't the same feeling she felt when Alex became cold towards her. This was different. It reeked with danger, malice, and bloodlust that caused Abby's body to immediately react. Her heart accelerated as she started to force herself to turn around. She knew that someone was behind her and she felt to her bones that she was in grave danger. She could feel it. She tried to convince herself that it was just her imagination and that maybe, it was just a ghost, she was terrified of ghosts. She swallowed and her mind prepared for her to scream, however, her throat suddenly dried up like a well in the desert. This menacing aura that someone behind her was emitting was too strong for her to handle that her body had surrendered before she realized it. She gripped the swing's chains as she tried to force her body to move. She knew she couldn't run at this rate. And thus, she decided to turn and look behind her. But before she could move her head, someone's voice made her freeze in place. Don't move, Abigail. The voice said and Abby's eyes widened. Her eyes darted to the source of the voice which came from in front of her and what she saw shocked her. Hey Alex. She thought she had called out his name but no sound came out of her lips. Alex was there, standing a few steps away in front of her. When did he get here? The man wasn't looking at her, however. His eyes zeroed in on something or someone behind her. But seeing him felt like she just saw her moon in the darkness. Her frozen body began to melt and she knew that she would be able to move now. Just as Abby was about to move to run towards him, Alex stopped her again. I told you. Don't move, he commanded, his voice hard and stern. She saw his eyes burning with danger, locking her down in place. Abby swallowed as she finally realized that this situation was more dangerous than she thought. She remembered Alex's expression when he saved her that night in that bar but that expression paled in comparison to this. His face was so much calmer this time but there was a burning hell in his eyes. It was so frightening that Abby didn't even realize that she had held her breath for a long time just looking at his eyes. Close your eyes, Abigail, were the next words she heard. The man didn't even glance at her. Now! And don't open them until I say so. Abby was forced to close her eyes and then in the next second, a cold wind blew past her as noises began to ring in her ears. Abby sat as still as a statue as she listened hard to what was happening behind her. She heard a crack as something, maybe a fist, made strong contact into someone's face. She had heard bones crack before, when Alex had stood on that man's hand at the bar and this sounded akin to that. Seconds later, she could hear more bones cracking, thumps and thuds. The murderous auras that came from behind her were extreme. She had never felt such incredibly dark and killing intent in her life. Abby's heart began to pump wildly as ever because she could that the fight going on behind her was very dangerous. There were so many sounds coming from behind her but she couldn't make sense of them anymore and just as she was about to cover her ears, everything fell silent. Hey Alex. Are you alright? I am opening my eyes, she said when she couldn't bear it anymore. She was worried to death about him and she desperately wanted to know if Alex was alright. She knew that he wasn't weak, in fact she had seen how dangerous he was when he took down that man in the bar, but still, she couldn't help but feel worried. Alex, she called out again and when she heard no response, she turned around but before she could open her eyes, a pair of large hands covered her eyes. What a disobedient little lamb. She heard Alex's voice and she knew that he was the one holding her. 
W what's going on, she asked but the man didn't respond. After half a minute, Alex finally removed his hands from her eyes. Aubie looked at him and then looked behind him. There was no one around. Where is? She looked at him in confusion and with a million questions in her eyes. His glimmering eyes and his long black coat made him look like the most beautiful villain. Her eyes surveyed him and he didn't have any injuries at all, not even dirt on his clothes. The man just ran his fingers through his hair as he let out a sigh. Ah. He ran away, he replied. His expression was back to his usual laid-back look as if nothing had happened at all. H-E. M-M. Your stalker. My stalker. I don't have a stalker, she argued. She had been working here for years now and she never experienced being stalked before, this was because Kelly had dealt with them all before she found out, but even then, this was the first time she had ever felt that kind of chilling feeling where she felt someone truly had murderous intentions towards. You do, but I just beat him so he escaped, he insisted nonchalantly. Abby looked at him with suspicion but the man suddenly carried her and put her inside a car before he walked around and sat in the driver's seat. He started the engine and looked at Abby. What, you're not happy that I am back, he asked, flashing that mischievous yet enchanting smile that Abby had missed so much. Abby was forced to return her attention to him. She knelt on the passenger seat and faced towards him. She rested her hands on his shoulders as she looked deeply into his eyes. That hellish look was gone, leaving no trace that it was ever there. I am. I thought you weren't going to come, she told him as she bit her lip. Thank you for saving me, she added and she hugged him. Alex's mischievous smirk faded. For some reason, what she said made him look like he wasn't pleased as if he didn't like that she had thanked him because he didn't deserve it. But then, his mood was quick to change again. What? Did you think that I died or something? He asked smugly and Aubie's eyes widened. She looked at him with wide eyes, and then, the next moment, her lips trembled. I... I never... I would never think like that. I would never think that you're that you're. She stammered and then tears began to fall from her eyes. Alexander was speechless. He didn't get this girl. Why was she suddenly tearing up? Ugh. I can't believe this. He ran his fingers through his hair as he looked at the crying little lamb that was glaring at him. My girlfriend isn't just a naive little lamb and an unripe little fruit. She's also a crybaby. He shook his head, although he didn't look mad or frustrated. He cupped her little face and rubbed her tears away with his thumb. How did a creature like you even end up with someone like me? He asked and Abby puffed her cheeks. Sigh, stop crying now. It's because you're saying such awful things. Why would you think that I would think that way? She argued like a wronged little kid. Alex's mouth hung open. So you're actually crying not because of what happened but because of what I said. You're so unbelievable, Abigail. I have no words left for you. Please don't say things like that again. Hey, that was a joke, okay? I know that a little lamb like you won't even think about it. I know that you would probably even want to give a proper burial for the dead mosquitoes so... Ah, uh, what am I saying? He shook his head and pinched the skin between his brows. Take your seat, Abigail, and put on your seatbelt, he then said and the girl did as she was told. The next moment, he accelerated the car and the car flew like a bullet. Alex was waiting for her to scream or beg him to slow down but it didn't come. He looked at her and to his surprise, the girl's mouth even formed an oh as if she couldn't believe what was going on. In fact, she looked thrilled. He shook his head again. 
This was the same girl who just cried over a joke a while ago. The same girl, this little fruit. All the girls Alex drove in his car like this cried and screamed and some even got traumatized and never wanted to ride with him again but this little lamb, how could she be so brave and so weak at the same time? What was she? Alex accelerated even more to gauge her reaction but the girl didn't show even a slight hint of fear. She was really a daredevil, he was sure of it now. The car then stopped in the middle of a beautiful bridge overlooking the city skyline. He looked at Abby and took her hand. Did your scratches finally heal? He asked and Abby nodded. Yes. Alex inspected her hand and was glad to see that it was indeed better. He then looked at her with the sexiest, most seductive look in his eyes and that damned gorgeous and irresistible smirk on his lips and said, Good because I'm going to make you pay your debts tonight. Alex suddenly pulled her and made her sit on his lap, positioning her knees so that she straddled him. Abby felt her pulse quicken as she looked down at his oh-so-gorgeous face. He grabbed her chin and stared at her lips. I hope you're ready, Abigail, he told her and Abby subconsciously swallowed. His deep, cold black eyes lured her in again like a black hole but Abby persisted and broke away from the force of his stare. How about my request? I will ask you to pay your debt as well, she rebutted and just like that, his rhythm broke. A throaty chuckle left his lips as he looked at her with amusement. Not bad, little lamb. So, what's your silly request this time? He arched his gorgeous brow and Abby blinked at him. I... I will tell you once we're home, she answered and the man's smirk slowly faded. His face became calm as he caressed her lips with his thumb. Little lamb. He uttered, without looking into her eyes. What should a good girlfriend do when her boyfriend returns home after a trip away? He asked, still lightly caressing her lower lip. She couldn't see the usual mischief in his eyes this time. Abby stared at him for a long while. She remembered how she kept missing him since yesterday and seeing his face now and being able to hold him made her feel like the void in her life had been fulfilled. She couldn't explain it but when he was gone, she couldn't stop looking for him. Abby's eyes were suddenly filled with mixed emotions as she stared at him. The next moment, she moved and landed a kiss on his cheek. It was only a peck but it was filled with so much emotion that Alex felt his body freeze for a moment. When she pulled away, she placed her hands on his cheeks and made him look up at her. I missed you, Alex, she uttered and then she hugged him. Her voice was incredibly raw and filled with something the man never expected. Alexander was speechless. He didn't know why, but he was affected by those words, by that look in her eyes and by the simple peck she gave him. How did every little ordinary thing she did just become this extraordinary? Alex took a while to snap out of the spell she cast it on him. He struggled to put on his usual smirk. Abigail, you're stingy, you actually just gave me a peck. A good girlfriend usually gives more than just a peck, you know? He whispered in her ear and Abby pulled away. More. He nodded sexily. Mm. Like a kiss, right here. He took her hand and placed her finger on his lips. Abby felt like a spark just flew the instant she touched his lips. These were the lips that she kissed that day. The thought of him asking her to give him a kiss on his lips made her heart skip a beat. She never thought that Alex would ask her to kiss him because she thought that since he already knew that she had never kissed a man before, he would be the one to always initiate it. But then Abby thought that Alex might be doing his uh, raising a good girlfriend part-time job that he was talking about. She didn't like the sound of it but she wanted to try. She had experienced how to be kissed so now it was time for her to be the one to kiss. Abby suddenly looked like a huge challenge had been put before her. 
She took a deep breath before an intense determination began to blaze in her eyes and Alex felt like he wanted to laugh. Hey, why do you look like you're about to go to war? He chuckled and Obby's brows creased. Please, don't distract me, she told him with a serious tone and Alex bit his lips. Wait. He made a timeout gesture, as if he had become a referee on the basketball court. Ahem. He cleared his throat. Little fruit, you can't kiss someone with that look or your partner will run for his life. But you can't run away when I'm on top of you. And why are you saying someone? Do you want me to kiss someone else? Alexander's smirk once again faded. No, Abigail. That was only a small tip for the future, he told her. His eyes suddenly turned cold and he cursed himself. Why the hell was this riling him up? He was the one who started this. I'm not going to kiss any other man in my life Alex, just you, she declared before she closed her eyes and started to gather the resolve and preparation that Alex broke just a while ago. She was so focused on her new task that she didn't even realize how that last sentence of hers impacted him. Alex's body became as still as stone when he heard her. His expressions were unreadable but he looked like a certain kind of lightning had struck him hard. However, one couldn't even tell if he was happy or sad at hearing those words. He didn't say a thing and just quietly stared at her, until the little lamb spoke. I'm ready, she said, more for herself than for him, and the man looked like he snapped out of his own thoughts. She held his face, cupping his cheeks with both of her palms before she moved her face and stopped midway. She took a deep breath again and stared in his eyes. Abby was nervous, so nervous that Alex could hear her loud, loud heartbeat. Her face was grave and not romantic at all as she frowned from her deep concentration. It would at least be nice if she looked like an assertive girl but her expression was truly out of the norm. She was giving off the intense determination of a warrior, or a young queen that was about to lead an army to go and fight a long drawn out battle. For goodness sake, this little lamb was too much. Alex wanted to stay put and let her be. He wanted to watch what she was about to do, but he couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't keep a straight face when she was like this. He was afraid that at this rate, he would forget that her aim was to kiss him and not to maim him. And thus, the great Alexander could only raise his white flag. Wait, little lamb. You're doing it absolutely wrong. I don't want to tell you this, but you don't look like you want to kiss me at all. You look like you want to chop off my head. No, I don't. I'm really trying my best to kiss you, she immediately argued. She was so damn serious that Alex burst and his laughter roared inside the car. He laughed so hard that Abby just fell speechless and gaped at him. She felt a little bit miffed that he was laughing at her when she was trying so hard to do as he asked. What was so funny? She looked at him and was about to tell him to stop laughing at her but before she knew it, she was right there, feasting at the sound of his laughter and that pleasant look on his face. He really was like the most breathtaking view in the world when he was laughing like this. When the man noticed her watching him, he cleared his throat and stopped laughing. Sigh, don't look at me like that, little fruit. This is purely your fault, he told her and Abby frowned at him. I mean, you're too serious. Alex seemed to be struggling on how to even start explaining it to her. He paused for a while before he held her chin again. Look here, don't overthink it, little lamb. In fact, it is even better if you stop thinking and just go for it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? She nodded. Okay, she said and she held his face again. You can close your eyes if you want, he told her. He looked like he was very much enjoying this. That's a great idea. But you should be the one to close your eyes, I think. 
I need to be able to see so that I don't miss and kiss your nose instead, she threw his words back at him. She also thought that this might stop him laughing at her. The man had no comeback as her words made sense so he complied and closed his eyes. The smirk on his lips was still present though, as if he was still laughing at her inwardly. Abby closed her eyes as she released a deep sigh and shook out her hands and stretched her neck, as if she was warming up for a boxing match. Okay, Abby. You can do this. She encouraged herself. She opened her eyes and cupped his cheeks again but she was instantly distracted by his extremely handsome features. Instead of focusing on kissing him, she just stared at his face instead, as if she was memorizing every single feature of his delicious face, his long eyelashes that curled slightly were gently resting on top of his cheek, his long, straight nose that was so perfect that she couldn't help but run her finger from between his brows down to the tip of his nose and finally, those full, red and very seductive lips that were sexily smirking at her at that moment. She trailed her fingers over his lips and then she bent down closer to his face until her lips finally grazed his. When Albie ran her finger down his nose, Alex wondered what the girl was up to but he didn't move. He just let her be and waited patiently, knowing that she would eventually get there. The moment her finger trailed over his lips, he subconsciously held his breath because he somehow knew that the time was near. He wasn't disappointed because in the next second, her lips finally landed on his. He stayed still, eagerly anticipating her next move, but as time ticked by, the girl didn't do anything else. It was as if the moment their lips touched, she became a statue. When Alex couldn't take it anymore, he opened his eyes and spoke against her lips. Abigail, use your tongue, he told her. Abby pulled away a little and looked at him in the eyes. Learn to lick, he added and Abby's brows pulled together for a moment and then she nodded. Okay. Close your eyes again, she ordered him and once again, the man complied. This time, she didn't hesitate and moved her face closer to his with a bit more confidence. In the next second, Abby licked his lips like a kitten licking milk off a bowl. Alex. She licked him again and Alex could almost hear her saying, meow. Damn it. Abigail, are you a cat? He asked as he looked at her with disbelief. Sigh. I think I should demote this little lamb of mine into a little cat. You're not improving at all, little fruit. Abby was saddened. She was doing her best and yet this was the response that she got. W.Y. don't you teach me, then, she puffed her cheeks. She just copied the way he first kissed her. He didn't lick her then, but now he was asking her to lick him. How was she supposed to know that that wasn't what she was supposed to do? You didn't lick me when you kissed me, and now you're asking me to do it. You should have shown me how to do it first, she puffed her cheeks. But then, a mischievous grin left Alex's lips. I don't want to. Why should I, he said and Abby was just speechless. Alex was actually telling the truth. He didn't want to teach her, at least not yet. He didn't want her to learn these things too fast. He wanted to savor all her innocence for as long as he could restrain himself. Actually, deep inside him, he wanted this girl to stay as innocent as possible, but he knew something like that was impossible. Sooner or later, even if he decided not to taint her, someone else would and that was something he could never let happen. Because this little fruit was his. Only he would be allowed to take all of her. You said you would work hard, little fruit, so learn it yourself. She took his advice and thus, she started to explore. Abby placed her hand over Alex's eyes and forced them to close. Okay. I will learn for myself but in return, you have to stay very still and not stop me or laugh at me, promise, she said as her hand still covered his eyes. She felt him nod his head so she removed her hand from his face, 
making sure his eyes stayed closed. Abby looked like she was thinking hard about what to do next. If licking him like that wasn't what he was looking for, then what other kind was there? Her gaze fell on his lips and she frowned. Was she supposed to kiss him first and then lick his lips? She couldn't quite picture it in her mind so she leaned forward to do a practice run. She placed her lips softly on his and then opened her mouth to let her tongue out so that she could lick his lips but surprisingly, his mouth opened as well so her tongue didn't get his lips, it went inside his mouth instead. Shocked, Abby immediately retreated and released her lips from his. She was about to tell him off for cheating but then she stopped. Wait, was that what he wanted? For me to lick the inside of his mouth? Really? Why on earth would people do that? She wanted to test this theory so again, she planted her lips on his and opened her mouth slightly again. Her heartbeat was wreaking havoc inside her heart but she was determined so she poked her tongue out into his mouth but it didn't touch anything. It seemed it wasn't long enough so she tilted her head and pushed her lips harder onto his so she could reach. What exactly was she trying to reach? She was about to pull back again when she felt something touch her tongue. What was that? She poked her tongue out again and she felt it again and realized that it was his tongue playing tag with hers. Her eyes widened. Abigail retreated once again, causing Alex, who was left out hanging in anticipation, to break the silence. Don't stop, little fruit. Continue what you're doing, he encouraged and Abby snapped out of her daze. She dove in again and when her tongue touched his, Abby felt like she was electrified. She was still not used to this. Just kissing his lips already made her mind feel like it was covered with mystic mists, intoxicating her and making her mind fall in a daze. This was something that she thought she would never get used to. This feeling was just so incredibly good that she couldn't focus her thoughts towards anything else but Alex and his soft, warm lips. When the little lamb still didn't move, Alex finally opened his eyes and when he saw that his little fruit was dazed, his face softened and a smile curved on his lips. He realized that his body was being impatient again despite him deciding that he didn't want her to ripen too soon. He should have known that using her tongue was such a huge leap for this little noob. Sigh, it looks like it's still too early for me to be asking you to use your tongue. Come, little lamb. Kiss me again but just use your lips for now and learn to kiss properly, he said, grabbing her chin and pulling her closer. Abby finally snapped out of her daze and she swallowed. Just use my lips. Like the kiss you gave me. Hmm, that kiss was, well, that was the basic of all kisses. What I want you to do is upgrade it. Abby blinked at him. She was staring at him like a student so eager to learn, a student who was so thirsty for knowledge. Alex just couldn't stop getting amused with every expression she showed him. This girl was truly beyond words to describe to him. Even though he knew that she would eventually learn naturally if he kissed her more, he just had this internal pleasure of wanting her to learn this way, in this amusing, interesting and cute way. Clearing his throat, Alex tried to maintain his straight face. Okay, start by moving your lips, do it like you're giving me a series of pecks on my lips, but do it harder this time, he told her, like a good teacher. Alex was surprised at how patient he was towards her but he also knew that he was enjoying this, much more than he ever imagined. Okay. Abby, his good student, nodded and once he saw her close her eyes as she moved closer, Alex just stared at her pretty face, patiently waiting. The moment her lips landed on his, Alex closed his eyes and savored the feeling of her soft, sweet and innocent lips on his and then, the girl started doing what he told her. She pressed her lips on his, a little harder than before, and then she puckered her lips harder, before pulling away from him again. Alex smiled within him. This little lamb was truly a fast learner. 
He was about to think of how he would compliment her, but what the little fruit did next made him take back the compliment he had just thought. It was because Abigail started pulling away and then kissing him and then pulling away again, as if she was suddenly playing a game of push and pull. Once again, the man wanted to laugh. Surprisingly, he wasn't frustrated at all. Wait, he stopped her again. You're doing it wrong. B but you said to give you a series of pecks, only harder. That's what I was doing, she moaned, looking at him, wondering what she had done wrong this time. The man chuckled sexily. Yeah, I did say that. But listen, little lamb. You must maintain lip contact between and during each drawn out peck. Got it. Obby's lips formed an O. Also, draw each peck out to last longer. Don't go too fast. Obby nodded. She didn't know that kissing had a lot of rules as well. She stared into his eyes. She looked like she was now getting lost in his gaze. Alex could see that her warrior, serious look was gone. She now looked sheepish and vulnerable, as if all she wanted to do at that moment was kiss him. That was the expression that he had been looking for all along. Alex smiled inwardly seeing her expression, but then, again, the little lamb did something unexpected. She suddenly licked her lips and she did it in the sexiest way Alex could ever imagine. No, in fact, he never imagined that this little lamb would look so damn tempting doing that. Alex was dumbstruck. He was so damned aroused by her licking her lips. The moment Abby kissed him once again, doing a great job applying what he taught her, Alex lost it. Alex couldn't stop himself and he kissed her back. He didn't French kiss her but his kisses were hard and full of need, that Abby was left breathless once their lips parted. She looked overwhelmed with Alex's sudden intensity. The next moment, before Abby could start processing what had happened, the man captured her lips again. She felt like she was flying. She was kissing him back as if his lips were just something she could never get tired of. Even if he was not giving her enough time to breathe, she still wanted the kiss to never end. Alex's kiss was completely different from the first kiss he gave her. These kisses weren't full of tenderness, these were passionate, demanding, and wild. When their lips parted, Abby was heaving hard and her breaths mingled with his. Alex's eyes were glimmering with a mesmerizing yet dangerous light. Alex, something's pee poking me. Abby's dazed face turned so red as she told him. She was trying to move her body up to avoid it but Alex was pinning her down so she didn't have a choice but to tell him, hoping that he would let go of her waist. However, mm, I'm damn hard, Abigail. I was planning to go home first but look what you did, you woke him up again, he whispered. Your fault. Abby's eyes turned wide. T the little monster. H huh? Am I fault? She stammered, extremely embarrassed. Why did you lick your lips like that? Ha! Huh? Abigail? He asked, but he looked like he wasn't looking for an answer as he kissed her again, hard. And then, his lips began to trail downwards. Abby shivered when his lips reached her nape. A hey Alex, W were outside. She forced herself to speak because her mind was about to explode from the tingling sensation on her neck caused by his onslaught. She didn't know how much longer she could keep her sanity in place when Alex was driving her crazy with what he was doing. Don't worry, no one will see us. The windows are tinted, he mumbled against her skin before he sucked and licked her skin some more which caused Abby to lose her mind entirely. The man's hand then moved and the sound of his clanking belt vaguely echoed in Abby's ear, causing her already fast heartbeat to accelerate even more. Abigail, touch it, he uttered, his voice huskier than ever before. His skin was starting to glisten with sweat. 
His need in his eyes intensified. Come. He held her hand and let it down and in the second, Abby's hand was cupping it. Abby was suddenly brought out of her dazed state. She was about to pull her hand back but Alex held it captive. He held her there for a while until he was sure that she was over the initial shock. All this time, he held her gaze, peering into her eyes to get an idea of her reaction. Once he was satisfied that she was okay, he slowly lifted her hand off of him and placed her finger into his wet, warm mouth. He slowly closed over it and started sucking it, slowly, as if he was savoring the taste, as he gazed at her intensely, causing Abby's lips to part in shock. Her eyes were wide as a wave of shocking pleasure went through her body from him sucking on her finger. Touch me Abigail, he said before he let her hand go. Abigail was so stunned that her mind froze but her body reacted very differently. Still looking deeply into Alex's deep, black eyes, her hand slowly moved down on their own accord and found the not-so-little monster. She cupped him and he groaned from the pleasure. However, that wasn't enough this time around. This time, he wanted a little bit more. Abby, touch me without the clothes. He sounded like he was almost begging her. Abby swallowed and in the next moment, he pulled his underwear out of the way and released himself from its safety and then, he made her held him, without any pieces of clothing in between. Abby's heart was beating out of control as she curled her fingers around him. Abby didn't move for a minute or so as she tried to get used to this feeling. This was the first time she had ever touched a man's private part with skin-on-skin -skin contact. She felt a little scared and uncertain but she shook all those feelings away and tried to remember the lesson he had given her on that first night. Once she remembered the lesson, she felt a little bit calmer. Alex was hard as a rock and Abby holding him like that didn't help at all. He felt like all the blood had rushed down to that area and it was starting to hurt, a pleasant sort of pain. He didn't expect her to just hold him like that for what seemed like hours. He thought that she would do something straight away but that wasn't the case at all. He did his best to not be impatient, to give her time but the thin thread he was holding onto was about to break. Every second that went by felt like an eternity and it took all his self-restraint to not put his hand over hers and move her hand for her. But, even in this state, Alex was determined for Abby to do it by herself this time. He already showed her what to do the last time so she should already know what she needed to do. But damn. The suspense was killing him. He closed his eyes like he was praying for a miracle when finally, Abby moved. Abby felt extremely shy so she closed her eyes and she looked back on that first lesson she received. She started to slowly move her hand, up and down. She heard Alex suck his breath in as her hand started moving and she immediately relaxed, knowing that she was doing okay judging from his reaction. She kept her eyes closed as she moved and after about a minute, she started to increase her pace. Her hand tightened a little over him as she moved faster and faster. By this time, Alex had also closed his eyes from the intensity of her touch. For some reason, he was extremely aroused by her. He had never felt like this before when he was with other women. It always took him a while to get hard previously and even longer to get to the end but at this moment, he felt the feeling build up within him after just a few minutes. Abby didn't stop but kept the rhythm going faster and faster. Her arms started to ache but she persisted. She felt him pulsating under her hand and he was groaning more and more so she thought that he must be getting close. She kept going, up and down, faster and faster. Alex was getting closer and closer to the finish line. His breaths became shallow and sweat started to cover his body and then, after a few more seconds, his little monster erupted in her hands. However, Abby didn't stop moving. 
She still had her eyes closed and she felt something warm and liquidy land on her hand but she still kept going because she didn't feel him become little again. She knew that when the little monster became small, that was when it was tamed, but the little monster stayed big, so she thought that he still hadn't finished. Alex was still coming down from his climax but in no time, he felt himself harden again as Abby continued her assault. He was at a loss for words. He didn't know why she kept going but the words he was about to say were overridden by the groan that came out instead. Again, in what seemed like no time at all, he was hard as a rock and eager to explode again. Abby's arm however was starting to become sore and her pace soon started to slow down to a stop. She opened her eyes and looked at him, a look of defeat in her eyes. Her arm was very sore and she didn't know if she could keep going. She thought that she was going to fail because she couldn't tame the little monster but little did she know that she already had. Noticing the look in Abby's eyes, Alex covered her hand with his and he helped her. He knew that her arm would be sore by now but she had already awakened the beast again so it needed to be tamed once more. He helped Abby move her hand up and down like she had been doing and half a minute later, he exploded again. He stopped moving his hand and kept Abby's hand in place so that she wouldn't start another volcanic eruption. They were both breathing hard and the car was extremely foggy inside from the heat coming from their bodies. Alex took a few deep breaths as his eyes became calm again. Gone was the wild, roguish look as it was replaced with satisfaction and pleasure. Abby watched him as he slowly calmed down. He looked at her, his eyes were back to normal. Abby didn't look down. Even if she had touched the little monster, she still couldn't make herself look at it. They stared at each other for a while before Alex finally let go of her hand. Abby slowly retracted her hand and got curious with the wet stuff that covered her hand. She subconsciously stared at it and her big eyes blinked. Her eyes filled with wonder. She was so dazed that before she knew it, she was already sitting on the passenger seat. Stop staring at it, Abigail, he finally spoke and Abby's head snapped at him. His little monster was already hidden. Come, he held her arm and Abby blinked as she let him pull her back on his lap, although, this time, he didn't make her straddle him. He then took her hand and carefully wiped it with his handkerchief. Are you alright? he asked and Abby blinked at him before she nodded. What about your arm? He added and Abby stared at her hand. My arm is tired, she told him honestly, and Alex smiled. Do you finally understand the gravity of your words? That was only two times Abigail, Alex said when suddenly, Abby's eyes widened in shock. What? I did it two times, she exclaimed, looking like she couldn't believe it. B but it only went back to little once. Alex fell speechless. So this was why she didn't stop the first time. This little fruit. He didn't know what to even say. He couldn't imagine himself explaining something like this to anyone. Little fruit, I don't want to explain anything in words. I better show it to you for you to understand, he told her as he nibbled the skin on her nape. You did a good job so I'd like to reward you. His voice became husky again and Abby's heart began to beat wildly as he started trailing his nose on the hollow of her neck. Our reward? Mm -hmm. I'll make sure to make you feel good, Abigail. His eyes started to close and he moved in like he was about to kiss her. However, Abby covered his lips. She was afraid that the little monster would wake up again if they kissed some more. Alex's brows knitted as he peeled her hand away from his mouth. You don't want the reward? He asked, his face looking like he couldn't believe that a certain little fruit refused him. Let's go home, Alex. Um, my hand is still tired so we can't awaken the little monster again. I know that I promised four times but, I said that there should be time intervals, 
right? She explained. Alex threw back his head and chuckled. Little fruit. I think you are safe from the little monster for now, he laughed before his face became serious. He grabbed her chin and pulled her closer to his face. Listen, I only lost control because of you licking your lips like. He trailed off as he sighed. His thumb caressed her lips as he gazed intently at her. So I have to remind you Abigail, if you don't want me to go crazy, don't lick your lips like that ever again, unless you're ready for the consequences. Got it. Alex and Abby arrived back at the mansion. The sky was already dark and it was starting to get cool. They walked inside into the lounge area and Abby was expecting to see the other three guests but surprisingly, they were nowhere to be found. Where are they? she asked as she looked at Alex. Alex just shrugged, indicating that he had no idea where the three men were. Abby was going to ask something more but she was distracted by the mouth-watering aroma coming from the dining hall. She followed the smell and almost floated towards the dining hall where all the yummy food was laid out. Abby was famished as she had used up quite a bit of energy from, well, taming the little monster, so she was nearly drooling by the time she sat down at the table. She completely forgot about Alex for a minute until she saw him walk in and sit on his seat. Once he sat down, Abby started piling up the food on her plate and started to dig in while Alex merely watched her with an inexplicable expression on his face. As the pile on her plate decreased, Alex saw more room on her plate so he took bits of cut up fruit and placed on her plate like a nice master patiently feeding his pet. Eat more fruit, little lamb, he told her. You'll need lots of good nutrients in order to become stronger. Abby looked at him like an obedient little lamb and just nodded because her mouth was too full for her to speak. After the meal, Abby leaned back as if that would make room in her tummy. She was so stuffed that she didn't know if she would be able to get up from her seat. Alex rested his head lazily on his knuckles as he continued staring at her. When Abby finally noticed him staring, she stared back at him. Alex. Why are you staring at me like that? She tilted her head slightly as she asked. Is there something on my face? She blinked her big round eyes as she touched her face. Hmm. No, I'm just imagining how you would look if you became chubby. He rubbed his chin with his thumb. I guess you could look like a cute, round white bun, maybe as round as white watermelon. Abby puffed her cheeks. How could this man say these things to a lady? White watermelons. Before Abby could retort, the man suddenly laughed, as if he just got so amused by his very own internal joke. His pleasant chuckle echoed inside the hall and Abby fell in a daze for a moment before she huffed. I'm not going to become fat, she told him and Alex's laughter slowly died down. He still looked quite entertained as he held her wrist. Well, look at this wrist, Abigail. It's so small. It's like a twig that could be snapped in mere seconds. It's no wonder it couldn't even last for two rounds. His tongue clicked. You need to eat more, Abigail, he muttered and Abby pulled her hand away from him. These wrists will get stronger soon. Just you wait, she retorted as she closed her hand into a fist and waved it in front of his face like an old grandma telling off some naughty brats. Alex chuckled again. Come here, Abigail, he pulled her and made her sit on his lap. He took a deep breath as he rested his chin on her shoulder blade, causing Abby to feel her skin tingle at that exact spot. Pete please, don't. She suddenly tried to get away from him but Alex didn't let go. Behave, little lamb. Be but, you're sniffing me. She blushed, utterly embarrassed. So what if I'm sniffing you? I... I haven't taken a shower yet and I also got sweaty tea taming your little monster a while ago. 
Alex let out a throaty chuckle before he sighed and nibbled on her skin. Listen little lamb. I like the smell of your sweat, too, he whispered sexily in her ear and Obby's heart almost jumped out from its cage. Pete please, don't lie. There's no way you would like smelling my sweat, she protested as she struggled to get away. Ah, what a naughty, little lamb. Fine, he said. Obby thought that he would let her go but in the next second, he stood up and carried her like a princess as he walked towards the living room and then towards the grand staircase. Alex, I can walk. You don't need to carry me, she told him but the man ignored her. She felt like she may have weighed a few kilos more from the dinner she just devoured but the man didn't seem to struggle with her weight, even though there were so many steps from the bottom to the third floor. She wondered, not for the first time, if Alex ever used the elevator in this house or if it was just there for show. They finally reached her room and he wasn't even heaving. She couldn't believe it. Every time she walked up the stairs, she would already be heaving just after the halfway mark. She would usually take deep breaths to get as much oxygen inside her lungs but this man's breath was as steady as the second hand on clock, just steadily moving at perfect second intervals. This man was a machine. No wonder she couldn't keep up with him. He was like the ultra iron man with lots of stamina. Inside the room, Obi thought that he would put her down on the bed but to her surprise, the man went straight towards the bathroom. Obi's eyes started to widen. What was he up to? Um... Alex. But before she could tell him what she wanted to say, Alex put her down under the shower. Obi looked at him with a confused expression. Let's shower together, he told her and Obi froze. W what are you saying? Obi exclaimed. Her face was so red. Why are you so flustered? We've already seen each other, little fruit. There's no need to be shy, he smirked playfully as he rubbed her chin. I feel sticky as well due to your assault so I need a shower too," he continued. He smiled at her, that oh so devastatingly gorgeous smirk that froze her mind. And then, before Abby could even say anything more, the man started undressing himself. He started with his tie, loosening it up and then pulling it over his head and throwing it on the floor. Next was his shirt as his hands deftly unbuttoned it from top to bottom slowly revealing his toned, yummy chest and then his rock-hard abs. He then pulled his shirt open and as he shrugged it off, Obi saw his muscles move as they tensed during his movements. The food on the dinner table paled in comparison to the feast that was laid out before her eyes at that moment. Obi could no longer find her tongue. She was utterly speechless and shocked and dazed. It was true that this man had already seen every part of her but she had not seen much of his body apart from his upper body, so showering together felt a little too much for Abby to handle. Seeing her look like her soul was leaving her body, Alex leaned in on her and squeezed her nose a little. I'm not asking you to get completely naked, little fruit. If you're not comfortable, you can wear your underwear, he teased and Abby somehow registered some of his words. Come on, undress, little lamb. If you help me wash my back, I'll consider it as one taming session," he added and Abby finally snapped out of her dazed state. Really? she asked and Alex nodded seriously. His delicious torso was already in full view and he had now moved on to undoing his belt when Abby suddenly held his hands to stop him. Alex smiled with what she did as a certain naughty thought passed through his head. Hmm. Do you want to be the one to undress me, little lamb? He asked and Abby frantically shook her head. No. I just, don't take off all your clothes, she exclaimed and Alex chuckled again. This little fruit was simply amusing. Okay, but in one condition, little lamb, you get half undressed, too. He negotiated and Abby swallowed before she finally let go of his hand. 
F fine, she agreed and turned around as she started unbuttoning her shirt. Little fruit, did you forget that you undressed before me that night? Why are you turning around now, he teased and Abby blushed again. She remembered that night and she slightly shivered at the thought of it. She was extremely brave that night that she herself almost couldn't believe where she had gathered all that courage from. Maybe it was because at that time, Alex was still just a stranger to her. Now that Alex was not just some stranger to her, Abby was more conscious of herself. She was not fearful but shy and self-conscious. I'm done, she then said and slowly turned around just to see Alex, who was leaning on the marble wall, with only his boxers on. His body was just too perfect, like a sculpture, intricately woven by the gods. Abby's throat ran dry as she looked at him but the same was true for the man. He couldn't take his eyes off of her. Her curves were beautiful and everything about her reeked with innocence and purity that it was so damned blinding. Alex had seen a lot of sexy bodies in his time but they were nothing compared to how much he was attracted to this girl's delicate body. She was like soft tofu that was making him salivate in a very strange way, despite the fact that there were cute pink ribbons on her underwear. Abigail, do you love the beach? he suddenly asked. His eyes had stopped roaming around her body and he now looked intently into her eyes. Hmm. Yes, she replied, not knowing why he suddenly asked that. Alex's brows nodded a little as he moved closer to her. So, you have worn bikinis outside, huh? He muttered as he tucked her hair behind her ear. Abby frowned at him. No. I never wear bikinis outside or inside. I don't own any, she innocently told him and the lines on Alex's forehead disappeared. You mean, you've never worn revealing clothes when going to the beach? He asked, sounding intrigued as he smelled her hair. I do wear short pants and a crop top, she answered and Alex's complexion seemed to have brightened. So, I'm the first to see your body, huh? He sounded pleased and Abby's face turned red again. Alex looked at her with pride before he suddenly slammed his hands on the wall, trapping her between his arms. And then, abruptly, the lukewarm water started falling on them. I'd like to see you in a bikini next time, Abigail. He grinned and Abby looked away, shyly. Abby felt like she had turned into a red lobster as her whole body blushed from his words. Come, it's time for you to wash my back, Alex suddenly said, making Abby look at him again. He had turned around so his back was facing her and she watched, mesmerized, as the water slid down his body. She gulped as she took the soap and held it under the water and then she rubbed them in her hands until it foamed. She hesitated for a second, as if she was gathering up her courage to touch him, before she placed her foamy hands on his broad shoulders and started washing him clean. She rubbed her hands all over his shoulders and his back and she traced the outline of the black dragon subconsciously. His body was so smooth and hard like marble but so warm to the touch. Alex closed his eyes the moment she touched his shoulders. Her warm, smooth hands felt so soft against his skin and he felt like he wouldn't ever get enough of her touch. He was savoring her hands roaming all over his body when suddenly, he felt a different sensation on his back. It seemed that Abby had used her fingernails to scratch his back from where the dragon's body started all the way to its tail, as if she was scratching the dragon's back. Alex's eyes snapped open at the sensation. He never imagined that this little lamb would try to make friends with the black dragon like this. Alex suddenly turned around to see her pour shampoo out into her hand. He held her hand and all of a sudden, he made her put the shampoo on his hair. Wash my hair, Abigail, he smiled as he took her hand. Come, he said and he led her to the bathtub. Alex climbed into the tub and helped Abby step inside. The bathroom was quite large with golden taps and it even had steps going up to it and steps going into the bath. 
Alex sat Abby down on the second step, he made himself comfortable on the bottom step, sitting between Abby's legs. Abby felt embarrassed at first at their intimate position but as time ticked by, she forgot all about that as she started playing with his hair. The shampoo had lathered up and made heaps of fluffy foam on his head. She began to play with the fluffy foam, creating mountains and pyramids on top of his head and even going as far as playing with his hair, making them stand up in spikes. Before she knew it, she was smiling. You look like you're enjoying yourself. He threw his head back and looked at her, causing Abby to jolt. Do you want to bathe me every day from now on? He asked, mischievously as Abby's lips parted in disbelief. Abby felt her heartbeat thundered in her ears the moment Alex looked up. His glorious eyes were glimmering with those oh-so-alluring lights as he rested his head on her leg. She shook her head, blushing hard and Alex's deep chuckle echoed inside the bathroom. Are you sure? What if I make this equivalent to one taming session, he teased, looking mischievous again. His words made the blushing little lamb immediately look at him with interest because, well, she finally realized that taming his little monster wasn't easy at all. Washing his hair like this was way easier. I'm in, she abruptly let go of his head and raised her hand. I'll bathe you like this every day, she declared and Alex's chuckles became even louder. He lifted his hand and rubbed Abby's chin. Good girl. Now, do your best and satisfy me with your handiwork, he smiled at her again and Abby immediately went to work. Abby started massaging his scalp, using her fingers and fingernails like how the hairdressers she went to did it. She knew that getting a head massage felt so good too so she immediately did it for Alex, hoping to satisfy him so that he wouldn't change his mind. After rinsing his hair, the man finally stood up. He went and stood under the shower again and Abby looked away thinking that the man would finally wash his body and leave. However, the next moment. Abigail, he called out and Abby was forced to turn to look at him. Hmm. Don't just stand there. Continue with the deal, or do you want us to stay here longer? Abby swallowed. She was shocked. She didn't expect that the man wanted her to wash his body too. A little flustered, Abby took the soft luxurious body scrub he was holding out to her. Um... Alex. Hmm. What? Have you changed your mind? He arched his brow. His voice was still as sexy as ever. No. It's just that. I'm surprised that you're not embarrassed. Embarrassed? Why would I be embarrassed? Well, you're an adult and you're a asking me to wash your body. Alex was speechless. He finally realized that this scene was only sexy for him and not to this little lamb. While his mind was filled with dirty thoughts, this girl might only be thinking about every silly innocent thing even at this very moment. This little fruit just didn't have any idea at all. It looked like he had to show her first to make her see how bathing could become steamy and sensual. However, before he could move to take away the scrub from her hand, Abby had started scrubbing his body, starting from his neck. Tell me if I'm pressing too hard, okay? She asked and then she continued. She was doing it like she was washing a certain lifeless statue or her little pet dog. Alex felt like his veins were starting to pop. This little fruit just didn't know how to do things sexily at all. Once Abby moved to his arms, Alex had finally had enough. You're doing it wrong, little lamb, he uttered and then he stopped her hand in its tracks. He took the body scrub from her hand and yanked her into his arms with her back against his chest. Let me teach you how to do it properly, okay? He whispered in her ear, huskily, and then his hand started working its way on her skin. He started from around her neck and moved downwards, moving the scrub gently in circular strokes as if he was massaging her, damn sensually. 
Abby felt tingling sensations on her skin. She was shocked. This wasn't normal bathing at all. Um. Hey Alex, I. She wanted him to stop because she felt her knees had gotten weak. Hmm, he mumbled, his hands now moving down her abdomen. Do you feel good? He whispered in her ear, his lips touching her earlobe. Abby felt strange. Her skin was becoming very sensitive with every gentle scrub he made. Her face became redder. And then, he knelt down. He started washing her legs up to her thighs and Abby subconsciously stepped back, with the back of her hand covering her lips. Alex looked up and saw her expression. The little lamb had turned utterly sexy. Seeing that dreamy look on her face made Alex smile in satisfaction. He then continued his sensual assault. He wished that she was naked but he thought that this was fine for now. He was the one, after all, who said that he couldn't force his little fruit to ripen up. Hey Alex. I'm fine now. It's done now, she told him. She was embarrassed and extremely shy. I already know what to do so let me do it now, she said. He knew she was trying to escape. Alex stood and hugged her. Show. Sure. I'm not done with your back yet, he whispered and he rubbed her back as Abby buried her face on his chest. Once the man was done, the water from the shower started cascading over them. Did you enjoy it? He sounded like he was teasing but his eyes were serious. Abby didn't know what to say and she meekly nodded. I'll let me do it to you now, her eyes wandered around but Alex just smiled. Nope, we're done here, Abigail. You might catch a cold if we stay here any longer. You're still a little fruit, after all. I can't let you be submerged underwater for too long or you might rot. He grinned at her as he stepped away. The bathroom was huge so there was plenty of space. The man went and scrubbed himself normally while Abby quickly turned away and rinsed herself. In no time, she headed towards the towel rack, grabbed a towel and dried herself before dashing out of the bathroom, not giving a single glance towards the man inside. Once Alex stepped out, the girl was wearing her robe, drying her hair with a hair dryer. Alex moved towards her, his hair was still dripping wet. He was half naked with only a towel wrapped around his waist. Suddenly, Alex took the hair dryer away from her hand and then, out of the blue, he kissed her neck, causing Abby to freeze. You said that you're going to be going back home during the weekends, right? He asked, his lips still on her skin. Abby didn't know why, but Alex seemed a little strange tonight. She couldn't help but imagine him as a pet that had been parted from his owner for a long time and now that they were together again, all he wanted was to cuddle, touch and kiss his owner every single second. But then, she was fully aware that Alex wasn't a pet. He was a beast. A magnificently beautiful beast. Abby nodded. Mm. I did say that. Tomorrow is Saturday. He stated, still nibbling on her skin. Abby was so distracted with what he was doing but the next words he said immediately woke her up as if ice had been poured to the fire that Alex was fanning within her body. I'll be away again. I'll be away for a week this time, he uttered and Abby's body stiffened. Alex pulled away and looked into her eyes. W where are you going? She stammered as their eyes met. Somewhere, Abigail. I have work to do, was all he said. Abby realized that she was naive to think that she could make him stay right here beside her in all these 31 days. She had forgotten that this man wasn't like her. He had all the time in the world, unlike her. He had to work too and of course he had his business to take care of whatever it was that he did, and she couldn't possibly tie him down to stay with her every day. 
This realization made Abby's heart feel like it was being squeezed tight so hard. How was she going to fulfill her wishes at this rate? Seven days was too long for her. How would she spend those days without him? She had just experienced how it felt to miss him and wait for him for one day and it was awful. Now, he was going to be gone for seven days. When he came back, she'd only have 19 days left. Are you sad? Alex's voice rang in her ears but she couldn't respond. Sad. Sad was an understatement. What she was feeling at that moment was worse than sadness. She wanted him not to go. Could she stop him? Could she ask him to stay? Suddenly, the girl wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him into her embrace, as if she was silently chaining him with her two fragile arms, as if she didn't want to let go of him, no matter what happened. Alex was surprised with what his little lamb did. His brows knitted and he was about to speak but the girl spoke first. Alex, can I come, she asked. Her voice cracked. Alex stayed still for a moment before the decisive words came out of his mouth. No, Abigail. You can't, he answered and Abby felt like tearing up. Why? Her voice was now barely a whisper. Alex finally moved and he attempted to pull away to look at her face but the girl didn't let go. Her actions at this moment were making him feel strange. He predicted that she might not be happy with him leaving but why did he feel like there was something off with her? He didn't force himself away from her and just answered. Because it's a dangerous place, especially for a little fruit like you. I'll be fine, Alex. I... Show. When I say no, it means no, he told her and Abby's moment of despair made her let go of him. Seeing the look in her eyes at that moment made Alex squint his eyes. He didn't think that she would act like this when she heard the news. If, if you leave, H how about my daily requests, she forced herself to speak and Alex chuckled. So this little lamb was this sad because of her silly requests. This girl. Alex didn't know why but he started coaxing her. If you're worried about your requests, then don't be. You can ask me all the requests you want me to fulfill during those days, once I'm back. I can grant all your requests in just one day or two, Abigail, so that's not a problem, he told her, grabbing her chin. As long as your request won't be as outrageous as going to Antarctica or climbing an Everest with me, I can fulfill seven wishes in a day, he continued and the heartbroken little lamb's eyes became a little better. Ah oh, really? You're not kidding, right? was all she asked. His suggestion wasn't bad at all. Accumulating the requests and doing it all at once was actually not a bad idea. She could monopolize him for one or two whole days instead of just a few hours every night. I'm serious, Abigail. Ah, I still have to collect your remaining debts, too. As of now, you have 16 sessions of debt from me. Wait, it's 13 now and since I am the one who is leaving, I'm not going to ask for sessions during those 7 days. Abby blinked at him. Do you think you can pay for the 13 debts tonight? He asked and Abby's eyes slowly turned wide. There's no way she could do that. 13 times throughout the night. She might die. I can't Alex, how about you collect the debts, too, once you're back? Fine, I'll collect in one go as well, shall I? He grinned like a devil and Abby was about to heave a sigh of relief when Alex suddenly pinned her down. Okay. Well, I think we should lessen your debt one more time tonight, Abigail, he whispered and before she knew it, he was kissing her neck again. It was already dawn when Abby opened her eyes. Memories from last night flashed in her head and her face turned as red as a cooked lobster. She remembered that Alex made her tame his little big monster once more last night, while he kissed and licked her neck. 
She didn't know how she managed it but somehow, her arms found the strength to carry on. Some time after that, she didn't know how but she fell asleep as well once the little monster fell back to its slumber. Thinking about it, Abby felt like her stamina was really starting to decrease. She used to be able to pull an all-nighter just a month ago but now, it seemed like she couldn't anymore. Maybe it was because she didn't sleep properly the night before, because she stayed wide awake thinking about Alex or it could be because she was exhausted from taming the little big monster three times last night. Abby looked around as she stretched her arms out. The sun was starting to paint the sky with some breathtakingly beautiful hues, causing Abby to smile from seeing such a great view in the morning. However, her smile soon faded because she finally remembered that Alex was going to leave today. The thought of it made Abby quickly rise and leave her bed. She was suddenly worried that the man had already left. Still in her pajamas, Abby stormed out of her room and once she stood in front of the huge door of Alex's room, she breathed deeply before she finally knocked on it. However, nobody was coming out or responding. Thinking that the man was already awake, Abby ran back to her room and got changed before she went downstairs. As she descended the grand staircase, her brows creased when she couldn't see him in the living room. She went straight towards the dining hall, but the man wasn't there either. Abby looked for the butler, but he was also nowhere to be seen. A little confused, Abby decided to walk towards the entrance and gladly, the man was there on the step sitting like the boss that he was and he seemed like he was waiting for her. Good morning, Abby immediately greeted as she walked towards him with a big smile on her face. She was relieved and happy that he hadn't left yet. The sleeping fruit finally awakened, huh? He smiled and then, without further ado, Alex accompanied her on her daily exercise routine, telling her that she needed to continue this while he was away. Abby tried to slow the pace of the exercises so that she could spend more time with him but Alex was as strict as ever. He kept pushing her to go faster and in the end, she could only do as she was told. Her plan failed miserably. In what seemed like no time at all, she finished the exercise routine and she was in her room getting ready to head out. Before she knew it, she was sitting in the passenger seat of Alex's car as he drove her to work. Abby was silent during their trip to the orphanage. It was because her heart was heavy and she suddenly found it hard to speak. She kept trying to sneak a glance at him as if she wanted to say something, but nothing would come out. She didn't know what to say. Little fruit, what are you thinking about? Abby's senses returned to the present upon hearing the man's words. She didn't even notice that they were already in front of the orphanage. I'm thinking about. She trailed off before the rest of that sentence came out. She meant to say, I'm thinking about how much I'm going to miss you, but I'm thinking about where you are going, was what she said out loud. Alex looked like he wasn't pleased. Come here, he said. Stop thinking about boring things and just kiss me before I go, he demanded as he pulled her on top of him, making her straddle him again. Quickly, Abigail. Abby then kissed him with that tongueless kiss she learned from him yesterday. Abby's kiss was packed with the intensity of what she was feeling as she held onto his neck tightly. Alex also responded. The kiss was quite intense and it took all of Alex's self-restraint not to capture the inside of her mouth. Once their lips parted, Alex moved back with a sexy smile on his face. My little fruit is really such a fast learner, he said, proudly. When I'm back, I'll teach you more. And then, he let go of her. Um... Alex, can I call you? I couldn't contact you yesterday when you're away. There's no need to contact me, Abigail. Why? Hmm, because I will be turning my phone off once I arrive there. Why? Instead of answering her, Alex suddenly captured her lips again. Stop asking, little lamb, 
and take your escape now before you awaken the sleeping monster, he told her as he smiled mischievously, and Abi felt her face blaze. Why was this man being like this again? He wasn't being fair at all. Abi was forced to glance at his groin before she hastily climbed out of the car. She really was afraid that his monster would really wake up because she couldn't possibly tame it here, not at this place. Alex lowered the window and he waved at her. See you in a week, little fruit, he said with his wave and Abi unwillingly waved her hand as well. Take care, Alex, she uttered and stood there watching as the car disappeared from her sight. Over the next few days, Abi buried herself in her job. She went back to live home during this time and she spent the days like she always had, as if she was brought back in time before Alexander Cheen arrived in her life. She kept herself busy with doing tasks for the fundraiser and spending time with her family. The days seemed normal but to her, they could never be the same again because of Alexander Cheen. On one of the days, she decided to go and visit the doctor for a checkup. The tests showed that her condition was still stable which was a big relief in Abby's mind. However, she also knew that her condition could deteriorate as suddenly as a lightning strike. She only hoped that it wouldn't happen before the 31 days were up.